okay, the meeting has been called to to, to order. Um, adjustments to the uh, agenda. I would like to add uh, a discussion item um, nine point three. Uh, uh, Building committee for report. And I do not see, I thought that uh, uh, Tara, the woman from the, the solar place. Was yes, I'd like to add that. I, I'm sorry. I did not add that originally when this um, um, agenda was created, but Encore Renewable, um, and, okay. add. Um, and I don't know if uh, we had talked about possibly letting her um, come in about 645 and try to come in and do the presentation rather than having to sit through our entire meeting. So I'm not sure yeah, if that's, that's, that, that's fine. I, I think we can, uh, um, we can proceed with uh, uh, getting started. Uh, pause when she arrives to uh, 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 deal with her and then uh, uh, a return to wherever we happen to be. Um, and as I recall, her presentation was around was like a five minute presentation. And then we just decide if we're going to, uh, we have, we ask questions and then decide to adopt or not. So I would think that would be a 10 minute item. Um, I would think it'll take us probably five minutes to get through the consent agenda. Um, let's give 10 minutes to public comment. Oh, and I, I'm sorry, Ethan, I'm being rude. I'm assuming that as usual, you're, 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 you're intending to keep time. Is, is, is that the case? I wasn't uh, doing working on that in this moment. I was still doing some thing tweaks on the bulletin. So, um, uh, okay, maybe Amy, could you keep time? Do you think? Yeah. And that yeah. way, that way, that way, Ethan can be uh, a furiously multitasking in the background. Mm -hmm. Thank you. No, no problem at all. Okay, so uh, Amy, do we need to? So I've got um, uh, like a ten minutes on public comment. I have five minutes on the consent agenda. Maybe. Uh, yeah. Uh, 10 minutes on board comment. Um, uh, tell me, uh, tell me, oh, administration, uh, wise ones, how much time you guys each think you need. In terms of the principal um, report and veggie van Gogh. Uh, yeah, both of those, that'd be great. I'd say maybe 15 minutes on Veggie Van Gogh. I know there's some people on that we're going to call in. They're going to help explain that. And then the principal's report, just probably five minutes, unless there are a number of questions. Okay. Are we going to move Veggie Van Gogh to after uh, Encore Renewable, or are we just going to get to it down in 610? Uh, excuse me, 10-1. Um, I think probably the same thing. I think uh, did are, are, are we already here, Lindy and Bonnie? I'm sorry, Charlie. I didn't hear your question. The 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 representatives from Veggie Van Gogh are the people that wanted to to, to speak to that. Uh, Vic, are you on this call? Well, this Catherine. Um, I know Rob and I are also here from that group. Uh, Lolly and Vic were the ones intending to speak, and I think because they're at the bottom of the agenda. They might be finishing their dinner. I don't know. Okay. Well, maybe, maybe we shouldn't move Veggie Van Gogh. Maybe we should leave it right where it is. Sure. And we can certainly, we can certainly uh, uh, <coughs> early table, whatever we're doing, jump to them, resolve them, and then uh, go back to where we, we were to accommodate. Okay. To, to accommodate their schedules. And try to, to, to shorten that process for them. Um Okay, uh, Tara, how long do you expect that you would take? Bruce, how long do you expect you would take? Five minutes for me. It's just a recap of a couple things. But other than that, I want to spend most of my time on policies with you tonight. So, My report um, is actually just what you need from me as far as the budget mailer. I don't have a specific report to provide tonight, Carl. 
Okay, so we have no. Uh, there, 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 there is not an audited. Uh, there is not a not an audit to be presented. No, I finished up the review of the audit. We sent back it to the auditors today for the last few clarifications. So there is an. I'll email that to you in advance. Okay. Uh, we'll call the meeting to approve that once it's, we get the final draft from the auditors. Okay. Um, so we don't have to worry about uh, discussing an audit tonight, apparently. Um, didn't and policies warned policies. There are four, six. There's fifteen. There's fifteen. Um, okay. I think uh, what we should probably do is let's put the policies behind the uh, 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 booklet. And uh, um, do we do we need an executive session? I did not see one on here. Bruce is or Bruce not that or, I know of. No, Carl, not that I know of. Okay, Lindy, Bonnie, no need for an for an executive session. I'm nodding my head like you can see me, but no, I don't need one. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Okay. Um, so yeah, let's let's uh, shift policy adoption. Uh, uh, you know, to to uh, the back of the menu or the back of the menu, the back of the agenda, and uh, uh, do it after we've uh, dealt with. All the things around the next step for the vote, the annual report, um, the solar uh, or the, the the renewables people, and the veggie people. Um, and then we'll 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 do as much policy as 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 we we can. Um, Bruce, while while we're going through that, you might want to think about the order in which you want us to address those. If there's policies, we absolutely need to be getting on the books. Let's let's talk about those before policies that that uh, we may not make it because fifteen is a lot of policies. Right? Well, you you've seen these before. It's not like it's the first time you've seen them. There's only two that I want to pull back, and that is because Dean has advised me to do that. Okay, so it's really thirteen. Carl, also these have been warned in the paper, so we've already paid for the ad. To, yeah, so if we can try to. Hold in there at the last. Yeah. Just hang with me, please. Okay. <laughs> so we'll just give that a undetermined time, or. Um. Well, I mean, we would probably want to give it, you know, twenty minutes to half an hour. Okay. You know, say half an hour. Yeah. If, we should. If, if 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 we can. Okay. The big piece. I just don't want us to. What I don't want us to do is to spend a lot of time haggling over policy. And then turn around and find it's eight forty-five, and now we're trying to talk with Ethan about the booklet. Um, I think you know, getting getting some some clarity and some guidance around the booklet, around what the building committee is going to be, or, or what the, the 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 statement in the booklet around the buildings is going to be, uh, is is really pretty pretty much the thing we should be doing while we're fresher than necessarily going through uh, uh, policies about about uh, um, tuition and such. Um, does that sound good to everyone? I, I got a thumbs from yes. you. I'm, I'm, I'm pretending to be a is, I must have printed out a um, old, I'm not sure where I got it from, but what is 9.2? 9.2 is next steps for vote. Okay, what's 9.1 then? 9.1 is annual report booklet. Okay, I just got moved up. Okay, thank you. Yeah, and uh, you Mr. Graffy, this is Roberto. I'm one of the veggie Van Gogh people. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Hi. I, I just got a note from a colleague that uh, I should uh, I'll just let you know I'm a veggie Van Gogh person to, to speak to that whenever you're able to get to that on the agenda. Okay. Thank you very much. Yeah. Um, so we already have. Um, I'm sorry. Was that was that Vic? Mm -hmm. I, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> I, I know you said uh, so veggie. Uh, realizing that's probably yeah, that's right. the first name. Um, uh, if if you wanted to, we could we could probably uh, address you at seven, six forty five. Sure. We've already given to a person about uh, uh, getting renewable en energy credits. Yeah. Um, but then, it, but that that would give you a chance to. I mean, you can certainly listen to our meeting if you like. Those that sort of yeah. thing. If you, if you wanted to to check back in and loop back in at seven, we could probably uh, address you then. Sure, thank you. And how do I uh, go back on mute? Just 
star six again? Star six, absolutely. Okay, thanks very much. No, wor no worries. Thank you, Vic. Um, okay, so um, in the couple minutes before the uh, uh, energy person shows up, we have listed on the menu a consent agenda of uh, five sets of minutes. Jenny, I thought we had approved April 7th already. Is that... Uh, all um, I thought we did, but I'd have to check on last... I thought we did, but I could be wrong. Okay. Um, the stuff you shared looks fine to me. Does anyone else uh, have have comments one way or other? Amy? I'm sorry. I'm going to ask you. I, read, I read the policies instead of reading them. Um, I would entertain a motion to uh, uh, accept the minutes as presented. Do we want to do them as a, do we want to do them as a batch or do we want to go through them individually? That's fine. I, I move to uh, accept all the minutes uh, on your good word. <laughs> <laughs> I I second that. Okay. Yeah, it's more it's more Jenny's good word. I look at them, they say, okay, yep, that seems to match what I remember. Um, okay, you know, I, she's our fine tooth comb. Um, all right, a motion has been made and seconded to uh, approve the slate of minutes as presented. Um, uh, all in favor signify. Actually, we need to do a roll call vote. Um, let me get my little list up of people. Uh, Hi from Amy. Uh, what is this thing? Do we know what this noise is? It's in Jenny's background, is what it is. Oh, okay. I'm not sure if she's on on a job site or. <laughs> Are you at the dentist? Yeah. <laughs> Ethan, what say you? Uh, aye. All right. Jenny, what say you? Aye. Thank you. And Megan, what say aye. you? Aye. Uh, I also approve them. Uh, the minutes are approved unanimously. Uh, that brings us to 644. Is our uh, person from the energy company here? Okay. Um, hearing not yet, let's go ahead and Bruce, why don't you give us your um, uh, report to the board? I know we still need the first public comment session. I'm just trying to uh, uh, not get involved in, uh, in, 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 in heavy public comment when we've got someone theoretically showing up in a minute or two. So Bruce, if you can go ahead and uh, give us your uh, your uh, report. Yeah, I have three quick things. First of all, we did make a last offer to the union. Uh, we got a uh, inquiry back uh, from them today. It was due today, um, asking us some questions. I believe I've sent that those that communication to all the negotiations members. Yes. Uh, what they were asking for. And uh, I'm sure that we'll probably get together uh, later this week with our attorney to talk about uh, the questions they had for us. The support staff agreement, uh, final agreement's not due back until next Tuesday. Um, so that'll be a week from today. And um, We'll see where that goes, but I just wanted to let you know that we did get a reply from them today. The other thing is that I had a conversation with Jamie yesterday. I said, look, uh, summer meals and also uh, the summer program are your decisions along with the boards. Um, I've taken it as far as I can take it, and it would it should be up to you uh, and the boards about what we're going to schedule. I believe he's been holding meetings with Kerry and others. Uh, but at this point, I'm feeling like I'm out of it. And uh, I don't know what, uh, and maybe the two principals know more about that than, than I do. Um, I think he might have made a decision to move forward with the summer program as long as we only had 25 people 
in it at all, at all the sites, but I don't know any of that for sure because he's not talking to me about that and he doesn't need to talk to me about it. So, but that is in his hands. So Bonnie, Lindy, do you know anything? He sent something out yesterday that said um, <clears throat> he was going to move forward with having summer camp. Um, it would be July 6th to August 6th. I think there's still, he threw something out to maybe the executive board. I, I don't see who was on the original email um, about just making sure any questions or concerns were answered. Um, but they've started to put that out there in the community. And then for meals, um, they'll be run through a central site in Bethel and then Meals will be delivered for curbside pickup for any family with kids zero to 18, just like we've been doing now. Um, and that money will fall, be covered under reimbursement, by reimbursements and by um, the 21C grant. So there won't be any local funds needed to support that. And that'll run, hold on, I'm just trying to flip through to the right page here. My notes. Um, um, the 8th to August 7th for the meals. Yes, thank you. You're welcome. So if any of you have any questions regarding any of the board members have any questions regarding the summer program or summer meals, uh, you can address them to Jamie because I'm not getting involved in that now. It's all going to happen on his side. So, OK, um, searching my email, I see I just got one from him uh, saying that <clears throat> we're doing programming and uh, blah, 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 blah. A uh, disbursement will happen at each summer program site. So if the summer program is running at Stockbridge or Rochester, disbursement of meals to those communities will happen there, I guess, when it's running those four days a week. It's actually going to happen at both places, Carl. The summer program is running at Stockbridge. Meals will be provided there. The summer program will not be at Rochester, but meals are also going to be provided there curbside. Ah, beautiful. Um, excellent. And no one has told me that we need to take any action to, to, to approve that because it's coming through one planet and it's coming through. So it's coming through programs. We already are, we already are accessing, so we don't have to do that. So that is wonderful news. Um, and I see that, uh, 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 Jessica is here, so we can go ahead and, uh, talk about, is it innovations energy? I'm sorry. I forget the exact name of your company. Innovation renewables, maybe. Okay. Encore renewable energy. Encore Renewable Energy. Okay. Hi, Carl. Hi. Thank you. You're welcome. And I realized just before um, you noticed I was here that I was logged in as my son. Uh, so um, um, thank you so much for having me, uh, Carl, and the Rockbridge, uh, Rochester Stockbridge uh, group. I am a consultant for Encore Renewable Energy. And Carl, do you want me to go ahead and get started with it? The Absolutely. Presentation? Awesome. All right. I noticed that some folks um, seem to be already logged in, which is awesome. I had sent it to Tara earlier today. All right. Hopefully. All right. Can you all see it? Yes. Awesome. Yay. Okay. All right. Um, I'll just hit the ground running and we'll um, open up for questions afterward. Um, so my name is Jessica Redmond and I am a consultant for Encore Renewable Energy, a commercial scale solar developer based out of Burlington, Vermont. We are a certified B Corp and a Vermont business for social responsibility. We've been around, um, um, we have a great um, 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 history of um, making unusable property usable. Um, so I'll uh, go ahead and get started. All right, my goal for uh, this meeting with you tonight is to show how you can meet maybe some of your strategic plan goals by um, solar net metering and to specifically show you um, what working with us could do for you financially as uh, the RSUD district and then how it folds into the larger umbrella of uh, White River Valley Supervisory Union. And then I'll also outline a couple of things that we could do following that could move you in the direction of net metering. All right, so I'm just going to start with the numbers. 
So to determine how much um, anyone, any institution or organization could access solar energy, it starts with actually how much money you spend on your energy, not how much you use. And that is because net metering is what's called quote unquote monetized. Um, so we take how much you spend and what I um, got from Tara and the folks at central office um, were the bills for the um, Rochester grade school and the high school and for the Stockbridge Central. Uh, we take 12 months worth and I, these are the durations or the time duration that I got that data. And you folks spent almost $33,000 on your electricity um, in that time frame. Um, in order to determine how much you should net meter off of a commercial or community scale solar array, um, we take 85% of that. We want to make sure that what you net meter, you will actually receive full credit for. And so taking this 85% takes into account any fluctuations that may have from year to year. Um, and that almost $28,000 amounts to about a 100 kilowatts of, of, of an array. And if we were to go back to the front page, um, this is a 735 kilowatt array. So just imagine about this portion here would be, if you were allocated a portion of array, it would be about this right here. All right, so what does net metering mean? All right, there are two ways that you can net meter. Um, the way that I'm proposing to you is this. I'm not pro proposing to you that you build a, a system on your site. There's a lot of hassle involved with that. You would have to maintain it. You would your 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 crew would your facilities crew would need to mow around it and all that kind of stuff. What I'm proposing to you is that you and this is very loosely, it's not really purchasing, but that you sign on to an offsite solar project, and that particular that 101 kilowatts would be would be allocated to you. And by doing that, that portion, you committing to that, you actually, I'm gonna skip down to the third bullet, you actually receive, um, uh, I'm, sorry, I'm sorry, I'm gonna go back to the, the second bullet. On your Green Mountain Power Bill, you will show, you, it will show on your Green Mountain Power Bill that you are receiving full value, full, full monetary value of your 101 kilowatts that you are allocated. However, what you pay will be 90% of that. And so that's how net metering works, is that you sign on to this grid, this or not the grid, this array, and you receive a, um, a discount on it. Um, and how, oops, sorry. And how we're able to do that is like basically through some fancy financing and um, being able to use the tax incentive credits that come from the federal and the state um, government um, and with um, really innovative financing with our investors, we're able to pass that tax incentive savings down to you, the, the school. Um, if you also happen to have students at your school and families who have been really advocating for um, going to renew, oops, ah, going to renewable energy sources, um, off uh, net metering off of a community solar array absolutely meets um, that criteria. What we do is we basically do all of the upfront work. We make sure that the site that we're, is chosen is one um, that is within the GMP service region. And we have a specialty of working on unusable land, such as retired gravel pits, land fields, and ground fields. We don't, we can, and we often, we, not oftentimes, but we do build on nice property, but we absolutely have a preference for building on property that cannot be used commercially in any other way. We do all of the impact studies. We do the certificates of public good. We work with GMP to make sure that the grid, uh, that the array lines up with the grid. And we also deal with all of the financing and the construction. You, the school, have none of that responsibility. You have no upfront costs associated. Oops. You have no upfront costs associated with all the things on the right-hand side of that um, of this slide. 
All right, so getting back to the nitty gritty. All right, so that discount amounts to this. For the Rochester schools, you're looking at $179 a month or about $2,100 a year being saved. And again, I'm going to remind you, this is for doing nothing more than signing a piece of paper. You are not building a system and you're not maintaining it. For Stockbridge, you're saving a little over 50 bucks a year. And again, this is an estimate based upon those numbers um, that I got from your electricity bills. For a total for this particular school district- three bucks a month, 600 bucks a year. I'm sorry, you, you, you said 50 bucks a year and I wanted to make sure- I'm sorry, yes, $53 the audience, a month. The people that have dialed in on phones can't see the slides, so I wanted oh, to make sure- Oh, thank you for reminding me of that, Carl. Fifty-three dollars no a month for okay. So let me. So since there are people listening on the phone only, I'm sorry. Rochester Graydon High Schools, you're looking at a monthly savings, potential monthly savings of one hundred and seventy-nine dollars, and a yearly savings of two thousand one hundred forty-five. And for Stockbridge Central, you're looking at fifty-three dollars a month with a yearly savings of six hundred thirty-eight. For a total for the RSUD. $232 a year and two, uh, $232 per month and $2,783 a year. Now I've put on this slide, um, if RSUD and the other schools within the supervisory union who are not net metering, if all of you combined get on board, you're looking at a savings of almost $15,000 a year if you're solar net metering. For those who are listening, I would also like to add that the Newton School and the White River Valley Middle School and High School have entered into net metering contracts some years ago. They are saving almost $7,000 a year by doing this. So if we combine what I'm proposing to you as to this district and then all of the other supervisory union districts together, you're looking at almost $22,000 a year just by signing on to a community scale, community scale solar array or solar project. Okay, so how does this work out? So over the duration of 25 years, for the Rochester um, schools, you're saving cumulatively almost 65 grand, and for Stockbridge, um, a little over 19,000 for a total of about $84,000 a year. And if, like I said, if the other schools who are not net metering um, within the supervisory reunion go on, uh, sign on, they could potentially save over $450,000 over 25 years just by signing on to a community scale solar array with Encore. Uh, the structure of the net metering agreement is one in which it is a long-term agreement. It's kind of like signing on to a mortgage um, and it's because of the fancy financing. It is a 25-year agreement um, this is the type of agreement that the Newton School and White River Valley Middle and High School, they are also in these types of agreements. So this is not unheard of within your community. Um, Green Mountain Power, you will see on your bill, it will, it will basically, when you sign on and we have the grid um, and when we have the solar array attached to the grid and everything is online, that first month you will see that those net metering credits being applied to um, your accounts. Um, and so you will begin, your savings will essentially begin right from the get-go. Um, and so that's, I, I'm getting better with these. I'm getting through it a little faster. Um, so I'd like to open it up uh, for some questions um, at this point um, before I finish with the potential next steps. Um, Carl is, um, I'm going to go ahead. Okay. I'm, I'm going, going to, ahead. Uh, going to uh, a ask a quick question myself and then see uh, what, what other board members might want to say. Yep. Um, so the first qu the question I have, so is there, when you say there's an array, yes. are, we buying, are we buying a share in an already existing array or will this be part of a purpose-built array that's going to come down the road? In other words, if we signed, if we passed the motion and signed up tonight, mm -hmm. would our next bill or the bill after our next bill immediately start reflecting these savings? Or would these savings be, you know, nine months or the year out by the time you uh, designed the array, got the permitting, got the certificate of public good and so on. And then when that array came online, our savings would begin. 
That's a great question. Right at this moment, we all of our arrays that have been permitted and are ready to be built, they do have clients. Um, so we would be looking at an array that might not be coming online until fall this time or fall late later this year. We're we are in the process of we have a for, um, we're in the process of acquiring um, a a permitted project uh, where the owners cannot fulfill it. Um, I wish I could tell you more than that, but yeah, we're looking, we're looking, um, we might be looking a little bit later on this year. So it wouldn't be, but it is, so you're talking when you say, when you say September, you mean September, uh, 2020, you mean, uh, four to five months from now. So it would, imp it would impact the budget year we're about to go into. It may not impact it for all 12 months of that year, but we would, we would probably start seeing, seeing those savings in this next budget cycle. That would be, I, I can't promise anything, Carl, because obviously with everything that's been going on with Corona, our, 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 our construction has been a little bit delayed. Um, but I, I would say, I, I would say it would be the intent that it would somehow be able to be applied for this school year. For this upcoming school year, the 20, sorry, the 2021. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you. Uh, does anyone else on the board have a question? Jessica, can you, um, can you, as time goes on, can you modify the number of kilowatt hours that you signed up for, or are you locked into that number? That's a great, and thank you so much. Um, you are locked into that, and that is why we do, we don't do that full amount. Um, that's why we take that 85% of your annual spend because we want to make sure that you are getting as much as you possibly can um, that you get the net metering credits as much as you can um, and allow for some fluctuation uh, from year to year um, oftentimes when i get this question i'm i'm wondering well actually i'm going to ask you are you wondering what might happen if you your building situation changes maybe you consolidate schools or that you close a school is that where this question is coming from yeah that, that's basically where i'm getting at here yeah um and i'm sorry are is this amy who's talking to me this is jenny hi jenny thank thank you um so jenny I, i've been asked this question before and, and obviously other school districts have this question and the reality is is that we understand that things happen um, if for any reason, um, you had to close a building, there are, um, there are, um, what's the word I'm looking for? I'm not a legalese person, but there are parts of the contract that, that say you can leave the contract if you don't have the building anymore. So there are exceptions. I don't know what's the word I'm looking for, but it's in the net metering agreement that if you had to close a building, we we'd have to release you so um um ideally we'd love to be able to fill you you know to fill in that spot with someone else but we basically have to find another we'd have to find another customer does that answer your question jenny yes it does thank you any other board questions <laughs> I guess I'm just, um, I don't know really anything about net metering. Um, so I guess I'm just a little confused as to the amount um, that we are, um, you know, getting the solar versus the amount that we're paying for, uh, mm -hmm. for grid power. Mm -hmm. So, um, so basic, so the solar array gets its, you know, it, it, it gets the sun and it converts that, that, um, energy into electricity. All of that does go to GMP. It doesn't go to you necessarily. It doesn't go to your building. But what it's all, it's kind of, if you think of it this way, it's kind of like an accounting thing, um, is that you, your portion of the array, the energy it produces, you are, it's like, it's almost like you're getting the, the value of that energy you are going to see credited onto your GMP bill. OK, so um, so if, you know, your portion of the array produces the monetary value of about four thousand dollars worth of energy during July. You will see on the next GMP bill that you have a four thousand dollar credit. 
that you can, that 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 your GMP count can then have throughout the school year. So that credit will be applied to GMP. Now the part that you pay, okay, um, and actually you may have GMP bills in which nothing is paid from one month to the next. What you do pay is an equal amount of that, so that that um, 85%, that monetary amount, I believe it was $28,000, that gets broken down into 12 payments, okay? Um, and you, you, that 20,000 minus 10%, I'm sorry, let me take that back. That 20,000, that that's what you're going to get credited to your GMP bill. 90% of that is what you're going to pay to what we call the project owner. Okay. And that will be, um, equally space in equal amounts over the 12 months. Okay. And so Tara was so good to send me the net metering agreement um, of the other two project, uh, other two schools, and it states right on the um, on the contract um, what their um, what their likely credit will be, and then it shows very clearly. But you're only going to pay this much per month, which and that and, and with both of those, it was a percentage lower than that. So that's where the the money saved. That's where the that's where it, it's you're not going to see it necessarily month to month that you're saving money. It's going to be over the whole year. Right. So conceivably, there could be a month um, like in January or, you know, a dark month um, where we um, have a almost a full power bill. Plus, we would have the bill to to the project owner. Correct. Okay. Correct. And so that, it, you know, I, I'm not a business manager, but I would imagine that once this is in place, it's going to be hap- it's going to be something that Tara and all, your other accounting people will, will just need to, you know, they'll just have to or, the structure, you know, they'll have right. to realize, OK, in January, we might have this much. But in in June, July, August, September, maybe even October, we're, ne- we're paying nothing to GMP. I see. Right. Thank you for that. There it is. Yep. And I'm more than happy if people want to contact me, call me. Um, Tara is is my person. Uh, she is my person, and she's my my um, she's been my champion with with all of you boards. Um, if you have any questions, please send them to her. Um, she'll she'll know how to to get me. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. So the last bit is. Um, I have been sending, like I said, I've been sending Tara um, information as we go. Um, The next step I think would be is um, I can get to you a, um, what we call a terms sheet. And that basically summarizes um, on our uh, letterhead, basically everything that I just said to you, at least from the, the, um, monetary value, the savings, and what some preliminary terms might be. If you got, if you folks want me to, like I said, attend another meeting uh, or want me to answer some questions, that would be great. Um, I could send you this tone sheet. You could begin to send that to your the school attorney. I could also get from um, a possible net metering agreement, just our boilerplate, a net metering agreement for you to begin to look at. Um, I know that you are in the process of, you know, transitioning um, to Jamie and um, from Bruce to Jamie and the new school year. It would be awesome to coordinate all of all of the districts to eventually sign on so that this could, you know, we could we know that you're signing on, that you'll all have your own, that you'll have your own grid, um, your own solar array, excuse me. um, And you know, ensuring that that happens. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm going to be meeting a couple more boards in the next couple of weeks, and um, it would be awesome to know um, who um, would really like to be a part of this um, in, 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 in the next um, month or so. So, um, I think I, I absolutely think if, if you can produce a, a net meter agreement or a, a, a boilerplate uh, agreement as well as a term sheet yep. um, that the board can uh, can uh, take a look at and formulate questions to follow up with either you or with Tara yep. or with 
the dean of the attorney. Yeah. Um, and then, I mean, it's, it sounds like we don't need to be taking action tonight because this wouldn't be something that'd be rolling out till the fall. Okay. But it certainly is something that as we're looking at uh, uh, going forward, it'd be nice to, 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 to make a decision on and decide, you know, I mean, I'm, it, it, it seems fairly it, it seems fairly straightforward uh, mm -hmm. as to what you're presenting to us, but I think we, we we would want to have some discussion and come back and either entertain a motion at our next regular meeting or uh, get some answer for questions from you. Yep, awesome. And I'm seeing Amy's message. I've exceeded. Oh, I've exceeded my time. No, I'm sorry. I'm just the timekeeper, so I just like to keep uh, everybody aware of where we are. Yes, thank you. Thank All right. You. All right, thank you so much, folks. Um, thank you, Jesse. Hey, Carl, this is Tim. Yeah. Can I just ask a question? Uh, a, a very quick question. Yes, Tim. Uh, when you're talking about this kind of uh, deal, don't you have to have it go out to three bids? It's this like it's like having a bus, or you know, uh, it, it, I don't understand how just one proposal without checking through because. Green Mountain has a raise. Uh, Green Mountain Power has a raise too. So uh, I just have a question about the three bids, and then you know. Yeah, no, we would. That would be one of the things we'd be checking with the attorney about, Tim. Mm -hmm. um, you know, this is certainly not. Uh, the, the, this is a proposal that, that is not something we receive regularly. But yes, absolutely, making sure that it's it's fully within our. Mm -hmm. our, our 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 ability to consider or if we have to put out an rfp yeah. because you know yeah certainly again we we uh we, we we have a window to do it but we need to understand how that all works yeah. but your, your point is well taken sir thank you tim that is a great question i will say that this is this is not a this isn't something that you are acquiring this is not a project that you're acquiring so this is this is not to be become the property of, of the district um, so it's not an actual good or service that you're purchasing and so um, yeah all right all right well, again, thank you Jessica and uh, we will uh, reach out to you uh, and loop back with any questions or uh, uh, comments we might have great thank you so much thank you have a great evening yeah you too bye 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 bye. Okay, is uh, Vic and the Veggie Go uh, team ready to go, Veggie? Yes. Uh, hi, this is Vic. I'm here. Hi there. We can hear you. Uh, we can hear you well. Good. Vic, Thank you. Vic, why don't you just go ahead and explain what you're hoping to get the board? This is Bonnie, by the way. Why don't you go yeah. ahead and explain just what you're hoping to get the board's support uh, to do in both uh, Rochester and Stockbridge? Yeah. So. Um, I'm, uh, I serve as the emergency management director for the town of Rochester and calling for Rochester. And um, I've been working with uh, a pandemic uh, task force committee and also uh, representatives from some of the other towns in the area from Hancock and, and Granville, uh, for example. What we're looking to do is uh, get the uh, board's approval to bring on to the uh, two campuses, both in Rochester and in Stockbridge, uh, the Veggie Van Gogh mobile pantry program that would bring free fresh food uh, to uh, families uh, in the area. It's a total turnkey uh, program and uh, it doesn't cost the school or the, uh, or the participants anything. It's been in place for a while. It's a program of the Vermont Food Bank and it has been in place uh, for over a year, for example, at the uh, Gifford Medical Center uh, campus. This is a program that's available to communities only when it's sited on either a school campus or on a hospital campus. And so we're coming to you tonight to uh, ask for uh, permission to uh, bring that program uh, to the, the, both of the Rochester uh, Stockbridge campuses and to do it in a way in which uh, Gifford Medical Center would actually act as the local sponsor of the program. It would be a complete turnkey operation. And uh, uh, Bethany Silloway from Gilford, Gifford Medical Center is also uh, uh, on the call and, and can comment or answer uh, questions if, if there would be uh, a need to do that as well. So that, that's it in a nutshell. And uh, uh, this, this, you know, it stems from our concerns about the, uh, the pandemic's effects on the local economy. And you know, we're seeing 20% uh, 
unemployment in Rochester now. It's we, we believe that we're in for a long-term uh, uh, downturn in the economy, and uh, this would be a terrific help for families in the area to be able to uh, help make ends meet, uh, particularly with so many people having lost uh, employment. And uh, we think uh, it, it, uh, it's a good thing for the community. We ask your support for it. Hi, Vic. I I have a number of questions. This is Amy. Yeah. Um, so, uh, who has access to this program, to this to this resource? You mean who can come and get food? Yep. Anybody. So, uh, senior citizens. Um, okay. So, this is not a program that is is just for um, families of school age kids to help supplement. Okay. There's, okay. there's basically no questions asked when folks pick up the food. Okay. The only um, question is how many families are you picking up for? Right. Okay. And um, uh, I, in the winter, I noticed that they would need to be using a uh, room inside of our schools. Is that I read that correctly in that memo? Okay. Yeah, we, we believe we believe that would be uh, that would be desirable. Um, and we're thinking that perhaps the the auditorium um, lobby space uh, might be suitable in terms of square footage and access to the parking lot. Uh, so we, okay. we'd ask you to take that into consideration. So besides the winter months, because obviously in the winter months they would need power. During the summer months, do they need? Does no. their truck need power? Okay. No, it's, it's all outdoors. Uh, okay. Um, do they have volunteers to run this program for a full year? Because I do notice that it is a, a one-year commitment. Yes. Yes. Yeah, so they. Gifford, yeah, Gifford would would uh, assure that, and uh, we would have local volunteers to uh, to work right alongside with them as well. Okay. Um. And how do you see this uh, program uh, working with our local food shelf um, to complement um, that effort? Yeah, I think it'd be a really nice compliment to it. This program is focused primarily on fresh food, fresh fruit and vegetables, sometimes dairy, depends on what's available from bulk suppliers to the uh, to the Vermont Food Bank, um, and would be open uh, ideally uh, twice a month. That's what the food bank can promise. Uh, and so that would be a compliment in addition to the uh, once a month distribution of the food shelf on Saturday. Okay. Um, Amy, if I can just add to that, that's one of the things that struck me about this program is that it would bring foods that typically aren't available through the typical food bank structure. In other words, it would it would hit those fresh fruits, fresh vegetables, fresh and dairy that typically we don't find in our in our food bank programs. Okay. Great. And um, in Stockbridge, where um, do they have a local? They Stockbridge doesn't have a local food bank now. They would access one in Bethel. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah. And I don't know the population of of how many access so how many people access the Bethel food bank. I know in May there was um twelve people that came to the Rochester one. I think it's important also that with our farm to school grant, this is a great action step that we can put to show that we're trying to get fresh fruits and vegetables into kids and families' hands. And by partnering with Gifford, they have the system down because they've already established it. Um, yeah. And it's and a little more local. Would the, fr would the fruits and vegetables be local? Or would they just be part of the? Get, they would be get them be gotten from anywhere, probably. Uh, to the best of their ability, and Vic and Bonnie and Bethany, correct me if I'm wrong. They try to be from local farmers throughout the state, but sometimes it doesn't always work that way, depending on. Yeah, I mean they're, they're dealing with large quantities of commodities, and you know, do the best they can to get local and get volume pricing, and and uh, you know, I'm just not sure how that plays out exactly, but I think that's the intention. Yeah, this is Bethany Soleil from Gifford. I can say that in the summer months and the growing seasons here in Vermont, it is uh, all lo locally sourced um, 
fruits and vegetables as best they can. Obviously, in the winter months, many things come from Florida, uh, and you have more root vegetables and things like that. But in the summer months, it all is locally produced. Great. And would they continue, um, no matter how many people access this, would they continue to run it all year long at both campuses? Yes, that would be a one-year commitment from them, no matter what the showing is. Obviously, they'll adjust their amounts that they bring based on the volumes you see. So, for example, in Randolph at Gifford, the first time we did it, we had about 180 participants come and then that number grew and we averaged anywhere from 250 to about 350 participants up until the uh, shutdown in the last few months where we've been seeing about 600 families. I think it probably would be, end up being a good complement to our, um, you know, our effort that we're trying to feed our kids. <laughs> Um, this is Carl. Uh, is there any? Is it? Is it? The, so this is a. Is this a standalone program where there's not um, requirements or opportunities for uh, PTO involvement or student involvement or community service for some of our older kids? Um, I'm just and, and and that's fine if it, uh, that's fine if it's a standalone program. Um, you know, I, but and, and I'm not I, I'm not concerned that you're trying to, to, to make us give you a certain amount of man hours to make this or kid hours or whatever to make this happen. But I'm just curious about ways that we might be able to to to, to leverage that into curriculum or after school activity or, or whatever. You yeah, know. Ab absolutely. We would more than welcome that um, in Randolph. We've been working with the public based learning groups. Uh, with Lisa Floyd. So she brings a group of students uh, each time they get a said amount of bags, they take them back and kind of separate them out and actually deliver to 36 senior um, apartments locally. So seniors that are not able to get out on their own, the kids are going and interacting with them and handing off those veggies. Obviously that had to stop again with the COVID response, but um, that was happening prior to that. And we would more than welcome the kids' participation. I just think it's so great for them on so many levels. So we would right. definitely right. welcome that. Well, we, in, in the past, for example, in Stockbridge, at least, we've had a program where uh, in the summer, we would, uh, uh, the, the, after the, the summer program would take a, a set of ingredients that they knew they were about to get out of the school garden or a local garden and do some menu take, you know, because they knew this is the food they would have to work with. They did some menu development and menu tastings as yeah. part of the program. And so again, having the same sort of just, just something as simple as being able to tell, tell what's going to be showing up on that Saturday. So you could have an activity around, around menu development or things like that. Yep, I think there would be administration of the curriculum either, but I'm just curious. Yeah, about the yeah. The trick is we don't always know what's coming, and sometimes the food bank doesn't always know what's coming. Um, but they, I'm sure that they would give us um, a heads up if they did have an idea, and that could be something the kids could work around. Typically, the food bank does bring a representative who does a cooking demonstration, so that way the participants actually try something that's being offered that day uh, prior to getting their produce. Obviously, again, that's not happening in the last few months, but I know they'd be striving to get back to that model uh, as well as Gifford's done that too for um, like our chefs will do that to make sure the participants are getting a chance to try a new recipe. They can then take that recipe card home with them. Uh, one other thing I'd like to mention is we have partnered with other area um, service organizations like Clara Martin Center, Good Beginnings, uh, VSAC, um, Stagecoach, um, I had about, I think even Efficiency Vermont, um, and they'll set up booths outside when we're outside uh, and just have their service offerings there um, so people can go up and visit with them and learn more about um, other programs that they could get signed up on as well as like our community helps team from Gifford. Um, again, I haven't been offering that in the last two months, but again, we'd want to get back to that um, as we start to see some more normals again. Excellent. Does anyone else on the board have questions? So then really what, what it requires from the board 
and I don't know whether this is more a question for Bonnie and Lindy or 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 for uh, uh, you guys, but we would need to we would need to 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 to, to just move to to uh, allow you to make the arrangements you would need to let them use the facilities as you guys saw fit, and we yeah, still. So Yep, that would be it. We'd follow sort of the building use policies that the boards already have. But given that this was significantly different, we wanted the support of the board before we move forward. So moved. <laughs> Do I hear a second? Second. Second. Okay. Uh, motion has been made and seconded that the uh, uh, board accept the administration recommendation to uh, allow the Veggie Van Gogh program access to. Uh, both campuses for uh, the period of the year per the uh, uh, information circulated. Um, does anyone have any other firm further comments? Hi, Janie, how are you? I'm well, thank you. Okay, uh, hearing none, uh, uh, we'll need to go through and do a roll call vote because it's the new internet normal. Uh, Amy Wilt, what say ye? Yes. Ethan Bowen, let's say thee. Yes. Jenny Driver, let's say you. Who? You. Oh, Jenny Kleinberg, yes. let's say you. Yes. Jenny Austin, let's say you. Yes. Uh, Megan Payne, what say you? Yes. I also say yes. The board unanimously uh, accepts the re recommendation of the in of the administration to begin our partnership with the veggie with the veggie Van Gogh people. Thank you so much for coming. Thank Great. you. Thank you very very much. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So now we can get back to we were in the middle of the superintendent's uh, presentation when uh, we dealt with uh, veggie Van Gogh and uh, the energy people. So Bruce. Oh, Missed the policy? Shoot. Yeah, the policy? Yeah. No, no, you didn't yeah. miss anything. No, I'm good, Carl. That was it. I was finished. Okay. Uh, Tara? She didn't have anything. It was it was just any questions we had about the uh, what she was needed from her for our report, so I'm sure she'll chime in then. Okay. Uh, then uh, the principal's report. You distributed a uh, document. That it, had half dozen or so bullet points. I think the only addition is just how we're both doing sixth grade graduation. Okay. Uh, that we didn't put in there. In Stockbridge, it's going to be drive-in movie theater style. Uh, nice. Where each graduate will have an assigned parking spot with the six feet around. And um, then we've recorded as much of it ahead of time as we can to be able to just kind of hit play. And then we'll call them up individually so they are able to receive their certificate. And how many are we graduating in Stockbridge this year? Oh, we're graduating five. Can we come and see, Lindy? I mean... So what we're trying to work out is, unfortunately, because of like the gathering maximums, I'm not sure we can. We're going to do a live link, but what we talked about as a staff today is instead doing like a getting them spaced out around the little loop and getting to do a little uh, drive by celebration. Congratulations. And we'll post the link. I'm just not sure logistically how that's um, going to work so people can see, but we're trying because there's a lot of younger kids that wanted to come to. We're just trying to keep um, from getting our gathering too big and not being able to social distance. Okay. And then I turn it to Bonnie. Okay, so in Rochester, we have eight kiddos who are moving on to seventh grade. And our promotion celebration is going to be um, held on the park. We're going to have the youngsters spread out across the two sides in the back of the park. And they'll be able to stand there with their immediate family. Even though the grouping size has gone up, we're going to ask folks to keep it to 10. And then all the other well-wishers, faculty, anyone else, board members who would like to come, um, we're going to do a car parade around the park. And uh, the two fifth, sixth grade teachers and myself from the bandstand will uh, give the youngsters their uh, promotion certificate. 
So we're doing a bit of a parade style versus a drive-in drive in movie style. Um, and we're just working out the final details now, but those are the broad brushstrokes. It was interesting. We got the kids together. I'm sure Lindy will say the same thing. We got the kids together and sort of asked them, what is it that you'd really like to do? Because we knew we couldn't, you know, do what we typically do. And the one theme that kept coming up over and over again is they really didn't care what they did, but they wanted to be together and they wanted to see each other. Um, so I just thought that was, that was what we needed to make happen. Um, uh, before I ask uh, the, uh, the board members if they have any questions about your report, I wanted to uh, uh, specifically ask about, you mentioned um, uh, under curriculum and instruction that there's going to be uh, summer online tutoring support through One Planet. Um, is that going to be sufficient for what you think our, our kiddos need, or do you need additional resources from the board? Um, I, I think we could always do more. The question is about getting families to want to come and do more. It, it's tough when I know phone calls are going to go out this week, at least in Stockbridge making the sales pitch, so to speak, that your child should participate in this. And I think families are burnt out right now. And you're asking them to participate in something a month down the road. But I might have a different answer in July. <laughs> okay. Just well, based I mean, on yeah. feedback and response. I, I can definitely think that we could do more. But I just, with everything always evolving and changing, I, I know a need to get off a device is there. So I, yeah, doing, yeah, we've been able to, we've started a few of those contacts today and it's exactly what Lindy is saying. Some parents are very grateful to have the opportunity to have their child uh, tutored this summer, but they are, you know, respectfully declining. They, they just think that it's been enough time on screens. It's been enough time trying to make distance learning work in their household. Um, we do have some that are that are still want to continue. They still want their youngsters tutored. But your your question, um, Carl, I think at this point we have the resources that we need. Certainly, if we have a significant number of youngsters who suddenly want tutoring and we can't provide it, we'll have a conversation. But I don't think that's going to be the case. Right. Or if there's some sort of alternative, you know, kind of, you know. <laughs> I don't know, take, you know, bringing around a, a, a therapy dog to people's houses or, or something that, you know, is, is more SEL or, or, or whatever than just, you know, no, face in the Chromebook, Khan Academy, darn it. Right. Um, but, you know, just, just if there's, if there's, I guess, and I don't expect you to necessarily have an answer right now, but I, but if there's things that, 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 that you would want, please, you know, keep us, keep us informed and, and apprised. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, I will add this, Ethan, to our report, uh, because we just made that commitment a couple days ago, but both Lindy and I uh, have jumped on um, uh, Dr. Bill Ketterer's course. He's the psychologist that consults with our restorative classroom programs. He's offering a course over the next several days on uh, childhood trauma, and he's talking a lot about this extended um, closure from school and being away from your friends, et cetera, et cetera. So I'm anticipating that we'll both learn a whole lot about what we need to make sure is embedded into our uh, school's opening plan. Any other board questions for our administrators? Yes, I do. Um, is the play structure in Rochester open or is it closed? I think at this point, phone at this call at this point, it's still closed, Amy, because we don't have the capacity to clean the whole structure every day. We're we're trying to grapple with that, but right now it's closed. The the uh, the grounds are open, but the structure is closed. The grounds are open, but the structure and the preschool playground is closed. Wonderful. I have received um, at least two phone calls about this, so I'm not sure if we need to review our signage um, okay. to make it clear. Thank you. Thank you. Anything else, Ethan, Jenny, Janie, Megan? Um, okay. This is Megan here. I just wanted to say thank you to Lindy and Bonnie. I was concerned about the graduation, um, and I just want to appreciate all your work you're doing. Thanks, Megan. 
I should have mentioned while we're on the phone, uh, while we're on this meeting, that the public um, is is welcome on the on the Rochester side. We have plenty of room. I know Lindy's still trying to work out logistics, but uh, we have plenty of room for folks to join the car parade. Um, we are asking that they not gather on the park, but uh, joining the car parade would be fun. All right. Uh, thank you. So um, the next are uh, we're, we're going to do the uh, discussion items beginning with the uh, annual report booklet. So Ethan. Carl, yep. We never actually assigned a time to this. Do you, do you want like a yeah. half hour? Yeah, I think uh, I, I think uh, a half hour is a, a probably a good place to start. Okay, all starting. <clears throat> all right. So um, I just sent you a, a, the most recent draft. Uh, where we're at is that right now, finally, we have all the information. Um, we have, uh, um, and uh, uh, it's taking obviously just for various reasons a long time to get it all. But we also have um, a bulletin. There's a lot in it. We're at 30 pa 38 pages right now, um, which is huge. But uh, we were asked for a lot of information. The one thing that I'm at uh, right now that um, uh, I, I would look for your input on is that I have succeeded in getting all of the budgets into Word format so that we can actually write on them. Um, right at the line item, we can put things. And uh, I would welcome very much from all, the, um, from all of you, any explanations or questions or things, clarifications that, but uh, the, the only thing is I would ask that it don't go through me just because uh, there have been some formatting uh, issues trying to work in with, um, uh, with uh, Jenny's um, outline, which was great, but I didn't really understand sort of how it works, so I had to redo some things. Um, um, we've got a couple of new things that I don't think the board ever asked for, but I thought were good ideas. We have a report from Jamie as well as from Bruce. Um, we also have a literacy report from Janie, uh, which I thought was important. Um, one thing we didn't anticipate um, was the minutes from last year's meeting. They're quite long. Um, I've I, I'm just I just got a chance today, or just now, as I was listening to the rest of it, to edit them down. Uh, they're a little confusing, um, but um, you know they have to obviously be in there. And, and uh, Jenny, at some point, I want to talk to you about helping me uh, re, uh, help work on the for uh, the header. Um, I've done some work as far as introducing um, some of it's probably you'll go, what is this? But uh, a lot of it was information I thought was good. I still need to work on an introduction to the um, to our budget. I mean, there's a lot of information there and uh, there's a few more graphics that I want to come up with, but um, it, it's close and it's certainly a big improvement from last year in terms of information. Um, uh, there's a lot more we can put in there now because of what it is, but we only have, I mean, technically the last day we were to get this in is Monday, but I really want to get rid of this by Friday because I've been spending a lot of time on it. Um, uh, and I haven't put any artwork or anything like that. And it's just been really about getting all the material in there. Um, so, uh, I, used, and in some ways I know you have a half hour now. Um, you know, it's sort of like the budget itself in the sense there's a lot to look at. So I'm wondering if it wouldn't be better um, to send you all home with it tonight and take a look at it tomorrow or something. Um, if you want to go through it tonight, I'm happy to go through section by section and sort of talk about what's there and what else you need. No, Ethan, I think you've done an incredible, you and Jenny have done an incredible job with it. I reviewed what you sent earlier this evening. I do see a couple things that I, you know, have would like to talk to you about. Nothing that we would need to go through at this time. I think it looks mm -hmm. incredible though. Really, really good job. I do want to point out that the Rochester town report is 76 pages. So fear not that it's only, that it's at 40 something. Okay, 30, yeah, 38, or, okay. 38. The, the if, Rochester... if I get that from, yeah, if I get that from the board that we're not a problem, then... I mean, you know, I I did a section which is kind of fanciful, but it is about how decisions are made in education. And I include the website of the president of the United States and the Congress. Um, I feel it's really important for people to understand that there's decisions that happen in the classroom. 
that are made at the highest levels of government and that they have access to understanding all that. And so I put a lot of links and I want to put more links in. There's a really good link Amy sent me about education funding and how it happens, how it works. Um, I want to put that link in there. I want this, you know, to really be a document that people can take and, um, and, and, and say, oh, I want more information about this. Great. There's a link. I can go there because we can't put it all in there, um, obviously. But as I say, um, if you have comments, yes. Um, and as I say, if there's particularly if you have things like line items that you think I've, I've done a few. And I think, Amy, your tax, how the tax estimated tax rate, your explanation of that and the numbering worked really well and that's in there and I'm really, really psyched for that. I think that's the kind of thing we I wanna try and do with the budgets in the sense that we're really almost guiding people through these budgets. Cause right now it looks sort of like, oh, fun graphic, fun graphic, lots of numbers, fun graphic. And, and we want people to pay attention to the numbers, but we want to help them through it because sometimes, and this is the whole point of getting it into Word is so that we can, um, we can we can annotate and and change things um so good yeah I, i've got my notebook out if anybody's got any questions now as i said the the section i just the new one i just sent you i just got the numbers correct and did a little bit of editing um but it's um uh as far as sections and stuff like that so shoot um wasn't there something handed out last year at our meeting that was like if this is what you're like, how much impact it's going to have on your actual tax? Oh, that, yes, I had that loose in my in my bulletin, and I was curious about that. I had no idea where I that came think, from. So I didn't and know. Janie, maybe you can help me. I think Bill Edgerton normally puts that together. I don't think Bill least. Edgerton chart, yes. Yeah, uh, I don't know if people found that that would be helpful to include. I think so because I know sometimes like. Yep. Um, if somebody would take it on to find that and get it to me, I'd be happy to put it in. Okay. Um, Did somebody from Stockbridge do that? I don't know. Ethan, yeah. uh, one other thing, I don't know whether you want to include well, this or not. Well, can we, Bruce, can we just finish this up, find out who's going to take it? Between Janie and I, we'll talk to Bill. I'll talk you. to Bill, and, but just tell me again, what is my mic on? Tell me, yes. what are you, what are you um, his Look chart forward. that he does where it talks about how much it really impacts your property tax okay. bill. With all so that. I have it right here, it's called the annual school tax for residents paying based on their income stock bridge. And then the other side was annual school tax for residents paying based on their grand list property value stock. Bridge. So it's, is it just for stock bridge? This one that he handed out is, I don't know if he would be able to do it for Rochester and we should probably. We could maybe ask him. Yeah, yeah, it'd be, it'd be great. I mean, as I say, I need it, I need it like right away. That's the only thing. We're right. getting to the crunch period where it's really about notes, and that's about all I can add because I really, I just time wise, um, to actually reformat, and of course everything gets shifted down because you're working with Word. Right. So, but if you can get it to me quickly, that'd be great. I think anything like that is useful. Do you want me to get off and call her? Uh, if you. Uh, if we could know tonight, that'd be great for me. All right, I'll be back. Ethan, what yeah. day you, you're trying to get it to the printer by Friday? Uh, no later than uh, Monday, but I'd like to get it. I'd get, like to get it to her on Friday. And I'm actually kind of hoping I could get it to her Thursday so that we could see a mock up. Because a lot of times when you print things, it pushes things around. And I, um, I, my we'll see. From yeah, my notes from uh, last year, that was one of the big notes in it was to see the proof because yeah. there was indeed a couple charts that like they just uh, didn't print. They weren't colorful enough. Um, yeah. yeah. And uh, do you know, I mean, even if she even if she did it, you know, without binding it or anything like that, just right. a straight, straight, a straight run. Um, I'd love to do that. So um, um you know, if we and I'd have to talk to Penny about that, about how long that would take if she could do that. Like if I gave it to her Thursday morning, even right. if we didn't have all the final information, um, uh, uh, I'll, I'll ask her about that. Uh, Ethan? Uh, Ethan, can you hear me? It's Tara. Uh, oh, Tara, hi. I've worked with Penny on a couple of other books and she does provide me a proof to go through and she's made some suggestions on some changes prior to them printing the actual document. 
Okay, great. Well, uh, let me, I'll, I'll, I'll contact her tonight. I'll send her an email tonight just to say, Hey, what, what, if we need a proof, how soon, how soon do you need it? So do you want to give us the deadline of getting comments back to you by tomorrow night? Yes, that'd be um, as soon as possible. Even in the day, my, my work time is actually uh, morning. So, okay. um, you know, uh, uh, eight to 12 is really my main work time. I can steal away just as this is crunch time. I'll steal away some afternoon, but yes, the sooner you get them to me, the better. Okay. Ethan, I'm going to ask you this question. I don't yes. know whether it's too late for this, but re if you remember last year's meeting, Rob Gardner asked a question about why the SU isn't voted on by the public. Uh, uh, and I have all that research that I gave to him. Mm -hmm. I followed up last time. I've got it on my desktop and I'd be happy to it. send that. it to you. I can do that tonight. So uh, Why it's not you know, it's all the, yeah. yeah, it's all the um, uh, notations for where all that can be found. It's all state that's what, okay. so. That's great. That's great. Yeah, that's the kind of thing I don't really remember from last year. Like, I'm at the point now where I can answer all the questions for everybody, um, you know, that were last year. But I don't really remember what all of them were. So um, uh, I, I really would appreciate that. And maybe I'll send a bulletin to Rob and see what he thinks. Well, I mean, he, he and I conversed after the meeting and I, I did the research and gave it to him and he was, he's been happy since, since he saw it. So um, cool. No, okay, guys, that's, I, that's, can I interrupt great. for a minute? Um, yep. I just spoke to Bill and Carl, he said you would know more about it, but that he hasn't updated it in, um, since the merger. But if you could get him, if someone could get him the numbers, he would be able to crank it out to you tomorrow, Ethan. What what numbers does he need? Do you know? Uh, Carl, do you know? He said he would. He took it from the back page of the report or something. Yeah, I think so. I can let me take a look at it. I can uh, I can get him him and uh, Ethan an answer uh, tomorrow in the morning before noon. Okay, great. that'd be great. Anything else that anybody noticed? No, but I was wondering um, if you get that to her, um, you know, Monday at the latest, when do you anticipate re receiving um, the, them back? Um, I think you said we had to, they had to be in the hands by the 20th, so I figured sending by the 16th. Um, I, I believe I said it was coming out. She'd be done with it the 13th, going okay. in the 9th. That's, that's all, you know, unless it goes in earlier. I mean, obviously getting it in Friday – doesn't really make that much difference because they don't work Saturday, Sunday. So, um, but to mostly for me it's to, to get it. Get it the weekend, so you can actually relax. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. It's been, yeah. it's been a lot. It's been a lot to get it together. You, yes, you've done. You guys have done an incredible job. It really. It, it, that's a lot of work you've done. I think it's it's great. Good. Okay. I haven't looked at the latest Jenny? you sent out, Ethan, but I'll try to in the morning between other stuff. Yeah, Jenny, the, the main thing is that we didn't have a section for the annual meeting notes from last year. And so uh, it just needs it needs a section that needs to be section one. And then um, and then so that section two is the warning. Also, I just I don't know, Amy, how you got such a nice resolution on the warning last year, but it just looks awful. It's, it's everything else looks so clean and that just looks like a photo. And I'm just wondering if there's anybody has any ideas. I um, I don't know where the, the the warning is, the signed warning is, but um, I just I just don't know how you got such a good clean copy of it. Um, but it's, it's and it was also in one yours is in one page, and right now I've got it in two images, so it keeps pushing things down. So, so that's just a technical issue. I'd love for help, some help on. So. Um... And I, because it's a it's a sign. I don't I don't think we can make shrink it down at this point to make it smaller print and have all of our signatures on it as as warned. So, um, well, I just I who has it? I mean, I'd love to try scanning it myself. I have it, Ethan. Oh, you do, Lindy. Mm -hmm. um, I'm headed be... over to work tomorrow, so we could connect. Are you are going to go into work tomorrow morning. I am. What time will you be there? Uh, I usually leave here around eight and venture over. So you'll be there 
like 8 30 uh probably 8 45 8 but i can okay. meet you at the bottom of 73 i drive right by <laughs> oh um that'd be great what time there you want to meet at 8 30 at the um pull off there right at the bottom of 73 by our beautiful sculpture yes yes excellent then I, I do see something um that is kind of bothering me right away sorry yep. and i don't know if there's a, a, any way to anything we can do about it but in our budget when you mm -hmm. get to the next page there's no heading on each of those columns so uh and so that makes it tough to to continue to read down uh, there is also no lines separating sections or, or, or you know boxes like you get in to help to help get from the left side all the way over to the right side without skipping lines. Um, that I, is, I think, a little less important than the headings. I do think that. The Wait, headings, I'm seeing headings. I'm seeing headings on my budget. When you, I had just opened the one that you just sent, and section five. Yeah. It, the I'm, first I'm page. Seeing I'm, I'm, I'm seeing headers on, mm -hmm. on each page. I am not. Oh, interesting. <laughs> Are you previewing it, Amy, or are you opening the document? I, I, I know when preview things get messed up. Okay, so what open in Google Docs? No, uh, this is Word. It uh, it immediately goes to Google Docs is the problem. Ah, uh, well, that may be that may be it. Yeah, um, um, this is why we wanted Jenny and I wanted to do it in Word, just because we felt it was more um, we could annotate it better. Um, yeah, we just felt more comfortable with it. Um, totally so I don't know. True. They're there now. Um, I don't know if other people open it and what they'll see. Mine, I think. Let me. Yeah, I'm, Jenny, I'm, sorry. Um, it shows up on mine, the headings. Okay. Okay. Like on page seventeen, for example, that's the area you're talking about. Yeah, I'm getting um, any of them. Yeah, six, sixteen, seventeen. Um, uh, it's interesting. The headings are not showing up on mine. I only see headings on the first page. Yeah, page fourteen. Well, I, I think don't know. it's different. What is the heading supposed to be on page seventeen? Well, no, so it's the, 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 the header is section five, proposed RSUD FY twenty one budget. Underneath okay. that, there will be a, a function and object description. Um, FY19 budget, FY19 adjusted, approved, proposed, difference. And that goes right across the top of the page. I that's have on, that. So I have, the, page. I have the header. Okay. I so think it's a matter it. of Google Drive showing it differently. Yeah. Okay. Just be aware of that when you're transferring this information, transferring this to Penny. Yeah, to make sure it comes out there. And the other part, I got your point. I'm going to see if I can find a way to put lines at least over the main headers, Office of the mm -hmm. Principal Executive Administration, if we can do a line across that so that each section is broken up. Well, when because- you it, Sorry, when you Amy? Penny, you'll be sending as a PDF, right? Not the Word, correct? Uh, right. Uh, yeah, I, I imagine. Right, okay, oh, so you have to review it when you- yeah, the because like what Ethan was just talking about with the the sections, you know, you get to one section like art, and it gives you the totals, on um, but it's hard to know that those are the totals. Um, yeah, if, the, if you were able to get the lines, that would I think that would be helpful. Yeah, I think um, we can add in the lines. We also need an explanation. Oh, yeah. Um, your chart, the the, the pie chart, um, the yeah. blue. Is not very different between all those blues. So Which one are you looking at? I'm at the right before um, the the beginning of our budget. It's a page twenty, the introduction to RSUD budget, section five. Yeah, I'm getting there. Oh <laughs> yeah, yes. So yeah. one, yep. you have a, a, a yeah, I can change that. See, the, the, so the total is in blue, and what does the total represent? Mm. And then you have these other teacher salaries and SU assessment, assessments, which I assume the blue stands for non-negotiable. Um, no, 
this this is this is what's right there teacher salaries salaries other salaries paraprofessional salaries benefits tuitions but those blues are they should be actually distinct things one is to teacher salaries um, one is su assessment and one is tuition and the very just... bottom, there's one that is total. So uh, one, of your five, one of your five sections is this total. Also, budget is spelt wrong. Oh, yeah, I got that. <laughs> um, I found a couple other little... Um, oh, um, I mean... If you can make lists and send them yeah, to me. That, that's what I figured. I'll talk to you maybe, you know, later tomorrow morning about all, some, some. Little well, it's, just, uh, it's so much easier, actually, if you send me a list, because I'm just going through each time, changing everything. Okay. If I can, if, if I can get a list, then I, I work through it better. Super. Uh, but if I, everything I, is in a, in, in a, Google, in a word, so it's um, uh, editable. You're, you can edit all this whole document, right? Yes. Yeah, sure. except for except for the warning, um, and I think the thing from the state, which I have no explanation for, by the way. If anybody would love to come up that three-year comparable, I don't know why we have it, and I don't know anything about it. If somebody could give me a little blurb that could introduce it, that would be useful. Uh, I can do that. It's a it's a state required form. It looks like that because that's the way the state says it has to look. Mm -hmm. um, and you would be getting, yeah, just, you know, that 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 historically has come from the business manager. Um, and it's, I believe it's a template that they get access to from the state that generates, that, that generates that lovely number. That's data. correct, Carl. I get it yeah, directly it, from the state. Yeah. And if you can, if you can just send me a, a two line, three lines, just saying what it is. Um, and we, Carl, we did talk about the, um, um, the union and I describe in one section, I sort of talk about that the union is there and yeah. the, um, negotiations happen and that, um, uh, there, I do make some statements. I would please, I would ask everyone to make in, you know, go through them, some of the introductions, just make sure I'm actually right. Because I mean, <laughs> some of this stuff, I'm sort of like, I, I wrote it out and I sort of remembered that from a meeting, but uh, yeah, no, I will, I will sometimes certainly, late I will certainly, certainly go through that. I mean, it, it, it looks really good, but I have not, I have not read through it at the yeah. uh, proofreading level. But it I need some, it needs some time just for everybody to, you know, to look yeah. at. And I know Lindy and Bonnie also said they wanted to make sure that numbers were correct. And anything, as you go through Lindy and Bonnie, again, anything you said, anything that would add a little extra explanation here, what is this? Something that, you know, in the SU budget, <clears throat> there's a lot of, or the SPED budget, oh my God. There's all these things that just don't necessarily explain themselves. Um, and I tried to in the introduction, but that's not always the same as having it right there at the, at the line item. Great. One thing on the on the table of contents, we'll have, uh, make sure that you update that. It, it doesn't oh, automatically yeah. update. Yeah. yeah, no, I know that's totally all wrong because all the sections got messed up. Um, yes, Amy. I do not see the treasurer's report. Yeah, it's because I don't have it yet. I do believe it's required, though. So I, I think. No, I don't. Okay. Just wanted. I, to I think I think uh, Tara yeah, said that's today. That's something I'm working on, Amy. Already aware. Perfect. Yeah. Just wanted to make sure. We just need to make sure we got all the minimum requirements too. Oh yeah, yeah. No, I understand. Yep. I no, always I, have my checklist for what's required by statute. Thank yeah. you. Just as as soon as I can get that. Uh, where do where does that go? Anybody know? It can go anywhere really in the book, Ethan. You can put it towards the end of your. What is it? What, what it's, it's our it's our running cash flow, correct? It's so the actual are? treasures report is your fund balances. So it would be yeah. the fund for your operating account, your general fund. It'll be the fund for all your special revenues. It's the balances out of as of the 2019 audit. Jenny, where do you think that should go? Okay. Should be part of I don't know. I have to think about yeah. that. Okay, I, I'll put it probably in the our budget our budget section. Yeah, maybe Sounds after. Like it should go probably in our budget section. Okay. Great. Anything else? Well, well, I think we should all review and get back to you before uh, as soon as we can in the morning. Yeah, that'd be great. Thank you. And and not too much isn't. I mean, I'm I'm willing to put some more time into this. Um, 
I just, uh, yeah, I want to make sure it's right. So please do look at, look at it thoroughly. Good. Thank you. Is there any other board comment on, uh, on, uh, where we stand on the annual report? Um, um Amy, do you want to just give us a, a, a update on mailing and stuff like that? Okay. So I have been doing a lot of, um, digging about mailing. I tried to go down and buy a bulk mail permit because they did do some investigating. That is the, um, the most cost efficient way to mail these, uh, out, um, Otherwise, they would be at least a dollar a piece mailing out. Um, so, but I went down to try and, and uh, pay for that, but they don't take a credit card. So I have to go back with a check or cash. So <laughs> I'll be doing that. Um, I've already talked to the Starbridge um, town clerk to be able to get labels and talk to her about to make how to make sure we are getting them out to all of the um, Stockbridge voters and residents that have um, mailboxes in other towns on the people who live in Gaysville. And um, and so we'll be uh, bringing them to the Rochester Post Office. Uh, there's a whole bulk mail um, form that you have to fill out. We have to weigh them. We have to separate them by town. Um, so I'm getting all that together. So um, we might need uh, I might need another hand uh, when it's actual mail day to just uh, I'll, I'll try to enlist my 11 uh, year old. But well, so just you know. Hey, Amy. Yes. Spalding has a mail distribution center that they work with that I've used for the other two dis three districts that I've done this for. Just to let you know, so that if you didn't have the time to do it all yourself and so you mean like a mail merge they're doing the mail. Merge yeah, they have a the center right. that does the bulk mailing for you. And all I've had to do is provide an Excel spreadsheet from the town clerks of all the registered voters in the two towns. And then the it. mail center does all of that and sends them all out. And I don't know how many registered voters you have, but one of the districts that I just did, um, it was about $400 for the mailing itself. So did that just include an postage? idea. That was the postage only. That wasn't the actual printing from Spalding. That was just the postage. If that was the, the postage, but what was the extra cost to use their mail, um, that, that service? Um, I think it was a hundred and something dollars. Okay. I, that was I mean, what I had asked you about, Ethan, and you had said that Penny wasn't too keen well, on no. that. I I, I should ask her again about it because uh, I, I might have caught her early in the morning. She was just sort of sounding like she didn't want to do it. But if it's something she does commonly, um, maybe that was just in terms of getting it done. But um, I'll add that to my email to her. Okay. Um, what's the what's it called? The mail. I I always mail call it the mail merge. Center? It's it's where you. It's you just know. their Spalding's mail distribution center mail that distribution. they contract with. Okay. Okay, I'll, I'll add that in my email. I'll send it tonight. Is it the, the, the other thing to, to find out uh, about those, Ethan, is does that, you know, does that add a, a, a any time to the mailing? Well, that's it. Does, I think it does to her to say when it gets done. I think that's what she, I just need to know that from her. But yeah, I, I will check. All right, right. I just want to make sure that besides finding out what the cost of, of using the mail distribution center is beyond the postage, um, what's the, you know, it, does it, does, if it adds four days, we need it to does add some time, Carl, because once Penny gets everything done on her end, she then has to ship it out to the mail distribution center. So based on the one invoice that I have so far, it was 930 mailings. The mailing service cost was 128.35, and the postage cost was 326.34. So just to give you an idea, and their book was, I want to say, 20-something pages. Okay. Now, we can double that. Do you, do you know if they have a bulk mail permit or if they were just doing flat, like a regular rate? It is bulk mail. Okay. Just want to double check on that. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Well, it, are you uh, sending an email to to Penny about the, that, and you could get back to me, Ethan, on- Yeah, on I'm gonna ask her about the proof and mail distribution and what would be the timing on that. 
Yes, thank you very and, much. And our deadline, they need to be in the hands by the 20th, correct? That's the last. Can somebody confirm that? Yeah, because I. 10 days, they, they need to have it in their hands 10 days before. Okay. So that we need to be sending it out. I figure we need to be sending it out by the 16th to make sure. And is your informational meeting? We haven't set the date of our informational meeting yet. I mean, my recommendation would be to try and have them have it before your informational meeting. Oh, yeah. And maybe have it for a couple of days. So maybe like the 24th or something or the, I don't know. Right. We have to, that's in, in, in the next, in the next item, we're going to go through and do the, do the, uh, um, the uh, uh, next step for voting, which includes deciding whether it's commingled or not, deciding when we're having this uh, uh, online informational meeting. Um, and there's, you know, certain time frames that we have to have these things occur within. But we'll get to that. We'll get to that in the next in, in, in the next item. Okay. There's our timer. Good. Go Perfect. <clears throat> All right. So, um, next steps for voting. Um, we are currently in the uh, in the uh, candidate consent form window that uh, 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 we got confirmed from Dina for a six thirty vote. We have to uh, be taking candidate consent forms uh, until uh, uh, six five until Friday. Um, uh, you know, if if, uh, if Megan would need to, to get together with Julie and, and get that done, at least for Stockbridge, it was a form where I had to write my name and my town and put my email address on it and sign it and scan it and send it to uh, uh, Lori. So it's it's not a hard problem. Um, this also is the process for um, who the district clerk is, which is the current role Jenny has, and the district treasurer. Um, which, um, I forget who our district treasurer currently is. It's Becky Klein and she would be interested in, in continuing on. Okay. She's just learning about it and really wants to, to do it more and learn more. And, and she, more would need to, she would need to go and, and, and fill out a, uh, if she wants to be on the ballot okay. and for that matter, if, uh, Lori Scott or Julie want to be on the ballot as, uh, the district clerk getting that stipend to do the annual meeting minutes and to sign and witness, you know, the, the things like the, the, the warning and such. Um, those people would need to also fill out that, 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 that kind of consent form otherwise. And, you know, there'll be spaces for write-ins as I understand. Um, the uh, lawyer is going to uh, take the consent forms that both towns have received on Friday and they will uh, prepare a ballot for us. Um, and that ballot, uh, Julie said she can print for us. I'm assuming probably um, it can be, I mean, it sounds like it's going to be something that can just be run off on a copier versus having to be on official paper or with state seals or whatever. So I would imagine that probably Lori can print them uh, at Stockers. Whoever wants to see it will confirm that. Um, the last piece that we really have to make a decision on today is we need to decide when we're having um, our informational meeting and that I'm looking I have to figure out where the time frame is um, the information I'm, I'm, I'm losing the place where the the time frame is and I'll look that up in a second um, but we have to, the, the first thing we have to decide is around um, the, 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 the counting of the ballots. We have to officially uh, make a decision about whether the ballots will be counted individually by town and those town votes reported and they would be reported publicly to the, uh, to, to the clerk, which would be Jenny. Um, Jenny would not have to, to stop being the district clerk because she would not have to physically go to a, a location, be around everyone counting the ballots and all the ballots. The ballots would be counted individually by town, so the town clerks would not have to commingle either. Um, the town, the town CBAs would count the ballots, and they would say, you know, this many voted yes and this many voted no on each of the questions, and that would be reported to Jenny, and so they would be it would be part of the record of uh, what each town um, did, which 
you know, there has there 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 was at our uh, uh, informational meeting there was some uh, a, a, a public, you know, some some public feeling that that information that the for the board to be completely transparent, the board should perhaps report it that way. That Stockbridge said this on these issues and Rochester said that on these issues. Um, if we decide that, uh, and then other people have also said made the statement that well. We're one district. We should count as one district. We should try to not be separating things by by community. We should be trying to do things as a unified district, and that we should then we should then count as a commingled ballot, which means that the civil boards of authority, um, and probably that would be their representative, the town clerk, um, would deliver the ballots to a central location where they would meet the district clerk, which would be whoever would replace Jenny. Because Jenny has uh, indicated that, for for uh, personal uh, health reasons, that that can't that can't be something that she can that that, that, that she can be a part of, um, would then count the ballots or would supervise uh, representatives of the CBA, the town clerks, and 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 uh, supervise them counting the ballots in front of the district clerk. Um, the the points that have been made about that are that again we're a unified district. And that the counting is being done, you know, it's 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 being done under the supervision of the school board directly. It's not the school board taking a certified result from from a town a, a town civil board of authority when it's the school board's vote. Um, in our discussion uh, when we were first talking about this before we had our initial questions of Dina, uh, it was pointed out I think by both Ethan and Janie that uh, the most efficient way to get this done. Is just to let the let the towns count them. Um, you know, the towns open the mail-in ballots, let the towns count the uh, drive-by ballots or the in-person ballots, and uh, just report that information to Jenny. Jenny takes that and uh, you know adds the numbers together and certifies the result. Um, but we have to make a decision on that, and we should do that tonight. So, uh, board discussion. I don't know what's more efficient, and I and I certainly don't want to put anyone in harm's way, um, but with the with the times being what they are, I really, I really think it's symbolic if we, if we do, and again, I don't know all the ra practical ramifications, but I think politically, it doesn't it it doesn't help if we separate out these two towns and make them as two different things, can't we commingle and still find out what the individual times are? I just don't think we should separate it out. I think that goes into the conspiracy theory, if you will, that some of the people in Stockbridge are trying to perhaps um, intervene with. And I just think it looks, we are one district. That's what we are. And we should behave that way in everything we do. And again, if this is health and practical and it takes too long, that stuff I'm not talking about. I'm just talking about I, you know, politically and what I think is is just right to the way it should look. That's Thank it. <laughs> Thank you, Janie. <clears throat> Carl, did you see in the notes from the Stockbridge BCA meeting that they were feeling strongly about not commingling just because of social distancing and that we are still in a pandemic? Did you see that? Um, I had not. Notes I, 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 have not I have not. I have not. I, I, I've been busy trying to figure out what I'm saying for the annual report and not <laughs> spending as much time going through uh, uh, BCA minutes. So. Did, was there similar? Uh, did, did did the Rochester uh, uh, Civil Board of Authority weigh in on whether they wanted to count separately or count uh, together? Bonnie, do you know? And Bonnie, you had some ideas on this. What? Can, would, would I'm not sure they've held their meeting yet, Carl. I have a note to call the town clerk tomorrow to see if she's if she's been able to call them together. So I I can't answer that question. Um, I I do think like like. You muted yourself. Sorry. Um, I do think, like Janie said, that we are um, that we are a unified district, and we ought to conduct our business in a unified manner. Um, 
I, I think, and I don't want to extend it out in, into the times, but certainly there's a lot of divisiveness going on, and I don't know that we want to necessarily perpetuate that. Um, okay. That, uh, um, there, certainly, uh, uh, there, there certainly was opinion from uh, some Stockbridge people that uh, they were interested in knowing what the, 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 vote to, the vote total was by town. Um, I'm not sure. Um, again, I, I, I can't picture the ballot in my head, so I don't know if we could commingle it, if we could take a, 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 a town by town vote so that we're counting them together, but we're, we're reporting by, by polling place. Um, anyone else? Jenny, Ethan, Megan? Yeah, I'm really torn. I don't, I don't, I can see benefits to both ways and I can understand concerns on both sides. So I'm still kind of rattling in my head. I don't know what my personal preference would be. I will, uh, Jenny, I was going to, I was going to ask you to, uh, you know, I will say that that I don't think that if we want to commingle them, that you should feel like you should compromise your position. I think well, position yes. was, was I, yeah. very, very clear. I think, that I, I think that if we are doing it that one way, that I would have to be stepping it, stepping aside. But in terms of what would be best in general, I'm I'm still not sure what I think is best. Okay, okay. I, I just wanted to make sure that 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 that, yeah, that you understood that that we were not at all trying to put pressure on you. Right. No, I understand that. Ethan. As I said, in, oh, go ahead, Ethan. Ah, <laughs> sitting here waving at the camera, saying, "Go, go ahead." And then I'm no video. Go ahead, Amy. Um, well, I just wanted to say, as I had, state, had stated at a previous meeting, that I feel that we are a district and we need to take a vote as a district, um, one, one joint vote, um, rather than separate it out to point fingers at anything. We are one district. We are here for our kids. Um, but I, I do understand that we are in crazy times right now, but I do think there is a, a okay solution to it. And we can still do it in a location where we can social distance. And if, if there is a rep, I believe it's a representative from each board of civil authority counts. Um, we do have enough space in, in both of our facilities that they could be in a room 10 feet away. Is there no um, combo platter option? so to speak, is that not legally okay? And I'm asking because I'm still trying to process as we talk, because I agree, I think they should be all together. But I also understand people and want to respect people's concerns about not being put at risk during this process. So is there not a way we can not commingle them, but report out as a unified result? Is that not legal? I don't know. I've not, uh, you know, I've not gotten, I've not gotten long, detailed answers out of Dina. I kind of get the, the the direct like three word kind of commingled works like this. Um, you know, counting separately works like that, and not a, you know, I've, I'm not a you know nuanced sort of. It. And if you want, if you're trying to achieve this, here's your best practice to do it. Kind of answer. It's, it's yeah. The answer is yes. It's either one or the other, but you can't. Okay. Make Fair enough. That's all I needed to know. That was my solution. Now it's out the door. I got nothing. I mean, I can, I, I certainly can. If, if people are willing to uh, have another special meeting in the next few days, I can specifically ask Dina if there's ways that we can have a unified count where we can report out, you know, the 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 the, the, the votes by by a voter. You know, or not by not by voter. That's that's illegal. The, I was like, wait a second. The voting the votes by vote by by voter residents is what I meant. But again, I think that's what I think that's 
our unity is that we are in this together. We we are voting as as a unified group. It's not one side's vote. You know, it's a unified group. But, right, I do, but we're asking. I do hear what um the, some of the uh, people have said at previous meetings, and you know they did request some type of surveys, and I do think we should look forward to other ways that we can try to take the climate of um, the, the residents of the towns. I, I completely agree with you, Amy. What I'm trying to say is I think we also have to be respectful that we are asking people to put themselves at risk to count a commingled ballot. And I just, it can't be me. If it were me that could count it, I would say, go for it. Let's commingle. But um, I think when I'm reading notes that were sent to me that said that the, if for whatever reason, the uh, Board of Civil Authority in Stockbridge doesn't want to commingle because of our pandemic situation. I, I think that has to be kept in effect. But I also don't, I want it to be presented as one result. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. But I don't know that we can do that legally. So it's a conundrum. Well, is it that we need to provide the proper gear and for people? Is it the spacing? Is it the touching of the ballots? I mean, I understand this is scary, scary times. My mail goes into quarantine before for three days, you know, and then I open it with gloves. But, you know, how can we alleviate or help um, to alleviate some of the... What is, I don't know the answer to that. I'm just reporting out what was written in the minutes is not on the meeting. Well, if we are looking at doing them separately, do we have someone that would be a replacement clerk? Because we would need to find somebody. How do we do that and who couldn't be it? Um, it could be anyone the board, the board appoints. Um, like, Given that, given that I filled out my 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 form for election, it should not be me. Um, that would be kind of a, a definite conflict of interest, um, you know. Except in in, in you know certain banana republics, um, I could do it. Um, okay, so Ethan volunteers that he would do it if if we were to count count commingled. Um, should we wait and see? You know, check in with Julie and see what, what her opinion is and what the, their civil board of authority is, because I kind of feel like it'd be sort of not, I mean, if they're all saying we want to count these things separately because we're not comfortable, um, you know, c counting them together, like Lindy said, you know, as, as the non-political body saying, you know, I mean, we're saying we're, you know, politically we should count them together because we're one district or politically we should count them apart because, because we want to be transparent, I think that you know their approach. I mean, from what Lindy's saying, they're approaching it from from the, the public health. We don't want to we don't want to have to commingle and commingle our germs with other people's germs if we don't have to. So maybe we should wait and see what the Rochester uh, Civil Board of, of Authority says themselves, and then see how they feel about doing this. I don't think it's. I would not feel comfortable for us to force two body two you know the the the, the two groups of people. That are that have to be involved with this to be together if they don't want to be together. You know what I mean? I certainly understand what Lindy's saying. Right, I, I do. I agree. I or I understand. Um, but the Board of Civil Authority is Justice of the Peace, a um, select board, and the town clerk. Are those three people already in contact with each other, or is that part of what they are concerned about as well as being together within their own group? Well, I think either way, they'd have to be together in their own group because they'd have to be, they're either participating in the commingled count with the Stockbridge, where Stockbridge and Rochester are, are you know, maybe right. at different sides of a room but are together, or they're together, you know, they're, they're, they're there individually counting their, or, you know, in, in each town group, in each civil board of authority, counting their, 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 their ballots officially. Okay, so what do we want to do? Can we do that for the Rochester? Uh, who, Lindy, who is the is our civil? Is it the same thing? Is it a select person? The just the people at the meeting were uh, hold on, uh, select board members. Uh, two, it looks like two or three justices of the peace, 
and then the town clerk. Right. That was. I just think that also needs to be asked of people. You know, is there actually someone willing from each town? I mean, I'm just reading the summary of their notes. I don't know their discussion around it. So. Because the Board of Civil Authority, I have, it ha do they have to be at the polling place all day? A representative. A form, form, yeah. So and but so the town clerk has to be there all day though to to verify residency. Someone well, yeah, it's the whole workers to do that process. Okay, and um, the the logistics of the mail in ballot that is something that the clerk is town clerk is somebody has to receive them and then those all get opened by however we decide to do this vote. Right. right. They would either yeah. be opened by the individual towns. So right. if, oh, I, if I, as a, as a Stockbridge do. I understand that, yeah. Okay, well, we're ready. Otherwise all those envelopes would be brought to the, to, to the one place and opened together. Okay. Well, we're, we've got 10 minutes left on the next steps. And I think we need to, do a fair yeah, I, think, I, I think let's <sighs> I know <laughs> I would hear I would like us to hear with the Rochester um Bonnie can you confirm what the date of the Rochester uh, Civil Board of Authority meeting is it, is it really tomorrow morning uh no I don't know that it's tomorrow morning I said I was going to call the town clerk tomorrow morning to see when uh, she had scheduled it okay she told um, me she told me she would do it soon so I'm guessing it it's not too far out Carl because I met her last week Okay, because I would like to. I would like to. If, if the Stockbridge team is saying we don't want to count them in a group, I would. I think we need. I think we 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 need to postpone making a decision on this till we hear what the Rochester team says. Because I'm not personally comfortable saying you guys don't want to do this, but we're going to make you anyways. I agree with that, especially as someone that isn't willing to do that in person. I think that that is a good idea okay so let's let's figure out if you bonnie if you can let let us know tomorrow morning I what when julie says that meeting is uh, we'll send out a survey monkey or whatever to figure out when we're going to do a special meeting right after that to make this particular decision got it okay does that does that work for everybody i mean i think that it's it's you know it's an important decision but it is at the end of the day it's a decision that we don't have to struggle through tonight because we need to make it in advance of the election, but we need to really, I think, have input from the stakeholders more so than, than us just doing it. I think that's a, a good decision. Well, then that's all that counts, Ethan. <laughs> um, I, I'm still- Excuse me. <laughs> Let's see. He Does did we, ask for input. About, uh, I believe your informational meeting has to be like a week before your vote. Right. And that's what I'm, I'm, I'm looking for the. Between five and 10 days. Okay. So when do we want to do that between five? So that would be between say the, 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 the 24th or 25th of June. Okay. So, what, look up the calendar. Well, how are we going to do it? Um, I, I believe the advice we've been given is that we we would be doing it um, via via Zoom or via um, a Google, uh, probably via Zoom, so people don't have to be uh, approved to join in, but via Zoom or via Google Meet. I mean, that um, would be that would be a question that Ray would be is the person that would be organizing that. Would be would be giving us guidance on raise on the call. Yeah, I think we would really need to set up what type of format we're going to use because for everybody everybody's questions to be able to be heard, are we going to take them at the meeting at the time? Are we going to ask for them to be pre um, pre submitted? Which I would almost request. I think that would might be better, but it, that we present with pre pre submitted questions. Um, Ray. Um. <clears throat> I'm actually looking at Zoom and Teams at the moment. Um, unfortunately, none of them um, are perfect. Um, so I don't have an answer for you right at the moment. 
Right. I mean, I could envision something where uh, there is one person that is fielding all the questions maybe and, and submitting them in real time too. I just, I'd be concerned with um, a large, large number of public trying to get their voices heard and, and trying to get through. Um, given at one of the uh, previous meetings, and I don't remember if this was as part of an SU meeting or one of one of ours, because frankly, all your faces in this little grid start blending together. Um, but would be that we would be sending out some sort of when we decide on a date, we'd be sending out some sort of uh, you know whether it's part of the whether it's part of the uh, stuff in the booklet or whether it's a separate card or whether we send info in the booklet and a separate card. But something that, that points out a um, you know a, a, a dedicated email address where people can submit questions to, um, and we get that information out to the public in advance so that we can then go through and you know sort of marry up the similar questions and be able to have you know some, a list of, of talking points that are what people want to hear about beyond just what we feel we need to say, you know, as an explanation. Um, and then we'd be, I, I'd assume we'd be having some sort of chat feature or something that some way that people could be be taking in, you know, taking in questions. I think we can get as many questions ahead of time so that we can steer the meeting to answer those questions and address those, then um, maybe there would just be a few who didn't yeah. It would be good to be able to take questions in advance, but I think that we have to be able to take questions during the meeting through some sort of chat feature. Right, and whether that's whether that's through the the the, the built-in chat in the meeting, or whether we've set up a different chat portal, um, mm -hmm. or different, you know, a, 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 like I said, I, I envision us having a, you know, they're not. I, I don't want people emailing questions to Jenny or to Carl or to Lindy. I want them to, to email questions to our set annual meeting or some sort of, you know, some sort of dedicated uh, address. So we make sure that we're, we're, we're looking at them all in one place and that we've thought about maybe using the chat feature. Someone's on chat with that particular, you know, Google chat with that particular uh, email address so that that person can then be, be coming in and giving answers. Um, I know that when I've listened to, so my wife works virtually and has for decades um, with a, a huge company that does Fortune 100 401k uh, uh, plan plan management, and she is regularly in you know 50 or 100 person calls, and they often have there's a person that's you know that's that's that's, that's fielding those messages and, and 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 introducing them, and I would think it'd be a similar format. There would be you know, a board member would be tasked or someone would be tasked with, you know, watching that chat or and, 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 and you know, looking at that email or whatever and trying to get, you know, that information brought into the meeting at the time. But right. we would need to have um, a method for a uh, regular phone as well, not just email for people who are only able sure. to access by phone. Um, and that does make sense to have one person that is the contact, and then from there it gets brought to the floor, shall we say? Right, right. And I think we can. I, I think we can. We can drill into some of those details as we're planning. Right now, we need to figure out. Um, so, if our meeting is the thirtieth, we could have. I mean, that means that we've got to the 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 uh, Bruce said five five to ten days. The twenty fourth so, is an F bud meeting. Right. So if you want Tara, um, what about uh, so so the twenty third is? I mean, we usually meet on Tuesdays. There's, there's not anything on the calendar. Or the, the one that I have anyway for the twenty third. All the meetings should be on it. Okay. So does that work, does that work for for the rest of us? 23rd works for me. I actually have a work meeting, a virtual meeting on the 24th as well. Okay, so the tw 23rd is good for three of us. Janie? It works for me. Okay, Ethan? Bring it home, big guy. And Megan, too. And Megan. 
Um, yes. Good. Okay, Lindy. Yes. Bonnie. I'm what what time there. was that again? No time. Is that ding? <laughs> Just ding. Okay, thank you. How about Megan? Is she there still? Is she there? I think uh, I, I think with with everyone but Megan, I think we can go ahead and and, and put it down for the twenty third, and um, you know let's 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 uh, uh, let's schedule that. And if she if, if if there's some huge problem that comes up, we'll deal with it like we would when the COVID came up. So I would entertain a motion that we uh, set the uh, RSUD informa uh, informational meeting uh, for the uh, uh, six thirty uh, ballot uh, Australian ballot vote to uh, the evening of the uh, uh, Tuesday, June twenty third. I so moved. You didn't just set it for six thirty, though, did you? No, no, no. The, 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 the vote is for, the vote is for the vote is on six June thirtieth. June thirtieth, yes. Yes. No. We we do not. We are not required to. When we when we set a meeting date, we are only required to set a date. Okay. A, Sorry, just want to clarify the exact time uh, and decide whether we want six or six thirty or seven. Okay. Um, you know, after we've we've we've, we've contemplated for a bit. But the big thing we formally need to do tonight, um, and it's, you know, it's already eight thirty, is uh, um, deal with um, setting the date. So we have a motion that's made and seconded to set the informational meeting for the June 30th Australian ballots annual school board vote to uh, uh, Tuesday, June 23rd. Any further discussion? All right, I'm gonna take a roll call vote. Okay, uh, Amy Wilt, what say thee? Ethan Bowen, what say ye? Yes. Amy Feinberg, what say you? Yes. Jenny Austin, what say you? Yes. Megan Payne, what say you? She must have left. Megan, Megan may have abstained. Uh, I will also vote yes. The, the motion carries unanimously. Our informational meeting is set for Tuesday, June 23rd. We still have to follow up and, and have mm -hmm. another special meeting to determine the commingling versus separate counting, but we're going to do that after uh, we have uh, heard from the Rochester uh, Civil Board of Authority. So that point put that point to bed. The last thing we need to discuss about for the annual meeting book booklet and the annual meeting discussion is the building committee report, what we want to say about our buildings and what we want to say about our, about our intentions to, to operate uh, in buildings going forward. Um, just so you know, I put Tara's breakdown of building costs is in the budget or the report already. Okay. So that seems like a good place to put any building report you want to do. I have not actually read, I've read both reports, but it was a long time ago, so I don't actually remember them. So I don't feel that we should put a building committee report in the annual report because there was not an approved building committee report. I think that if the board wants to, I, I don't know what to say, but I don't feel that it's appropriate for us to put a building committee report in since there was no approved report. I I, I, I definitely see that, and I, and I and I kind of agree with that. But I think, and one of the things as I was writing the note, I started saying, okay, well, I'm going to crib some stuff from from uh, some of the building building report meetings and uh, uh, the minutes and uh, the, the, the proposed reports. And, you know, I said, I think really that we need to have a discussion about what the board is going to say or what the board wants to tell the communities about our position on the buildings at this time. I, I, I certainly agree that, that the building committee did not vote a report forward. So saying here's the result of the building committee will have both Rob Gardner and uh, Joanne Mills want to rip off my head. Because Can you instead talk about throwing out a survey? We are going to be surveying. We, you know, we met as a building committee. We have this report. It help us make any definite decisions. Uh, what we've heard from the community is that it's time to throw out some sort of 
feedback opportunity, and here's how we're going to do it. Yeah, I don't think we can put the report in, but I agree. I think we definitely need to talk about the work that's been done and what we were going to be doing before we stopped having face-to-face -face meetings, because we do need to include something. I, I agree with Jenny that we, because we had decided that we were going to go forth with com two community involvement with a moderator type of meetings to be able to further this discussion to, but we weren't able to because of COVID and maybe laying out what happened since we've got that report that we did create a building committee. That building committee met through the winter. Um, there was no, the, the building committee did not come out with any, um, how did you say it, uh, definitive answers because it's a complex issue. The next step that was planned was to go to do community involvement. And due to COVID, we are unable to, but we are want to look to other ways that we can get community feedback through surveys and, and stuff that can be COVID compliant. And I would encourage you to be as specific as possible because I just don't see us being able to bring large groups of people together anytime soon. I totally agree. So right. if you can say in the month of July, I don't know, I'm making this up. In the month of July, we are going to put out a survey that's going to ask questions about X, Y, and Z. Um, and this is how we're going to do it. That's our next step. And then we're going to tabulate the information and go from there. I think they're just looking, I hear you when they say they're looking for information. And I right. think the answer is the times have changed. So this is how we're adapting and this is how we're holding ourselves to that standard. And I do yep. think that we as a board need to have a bigger, an, a, in a, another meeting about our buildings. I'm not, I don't think this is the right time to, to begin more discussion about it. But I think that there is. Oh, no, I, I do not, I, I do not want to open a big topic at, at uh, quarter of quarter of nine. Um, you know, when we haven't, especially okay. when we told the communities that we're having this big major discussion. Right. You know, and, okay, and, thank you. I just wanted to make sure that that's to by. But I would um, like us to go in that direction in another meeting. Well, I, okay. What, so some of the things that, 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 you know, I've been asked about um, are, you know, could the board, I, I was asked directly, could the board just say that we're closing the high school and everyone's going to be in the elementary school and that's just how it's going to be? And the answer is yes. As I understand it, there is not, you know, I said, I believe we could, you know, the board could just tell the administrators you're going to be in, in, you know, in the elementary school or all the kids are going to be in the high school, but that's, you know, that's a power that the board has. And it's not a power that I believe the board is interested in, 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 in exercising. Um, but I want, I, I think it's important that, you know, it's, it's, it's said that that's, you know, that's a question that's been asked and I've answered it, you know, in, 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 in that particular way. I well, think, I think it's also, it's also, you know, the, the thing I, the thing I fired back in the mea culpa that I've, you know, that I started, you know, that, that I confessed to in one of our meetings before, and I'll, you know, uh, I'll say again, and I think this is where maybe the board needs to be asking our administration to, you know, we did not, we originally thought we would not be hanging on to two buildings for this long. So we did not originally say, you know, we don't, we don't want to buy for one, for one year or whatever, all the materials and supplies it would take to kit out um, the elementary school to break up, to put in temporary barriers, to break up the gym into different spaces for art and music on Tuesdays and Thursdays, um, or to do, you know, some sort of some sort of looking at that because we figured at the time that was wasted money because we want, you know, we were going to make a decision and we'd be in one building or another and spending a lot of money versus keeping uh, uh, keeping some spaces open um, in the other building for a year or two was the decision we've made. I think that if we're going to, if, we, if, if we're really going to be going forward, I think we do, I think it's important that we ask our administrators to, develop a plan, you know, to put us into one building, just because one I of the thought things we that, discussed this at another meeting. Well, we need to be, I think we need to be able to be saying that if we're asking the administrator, that it, I, I think it would be beneficial to, to the booklet 
if we can say if we can say that we've asked the administrators to to revisit that issue and to look at what that might cost, you know, in, in some ways, that's a responsible statement to say we're re, you know, we're looking at this issue we, because we cannot produce at this point. And this is another thing I've been asked for. Where's the study that shows why we're in the elementary school versus the versus the high school and why we're running rooms in the high school versus keeping everyone in one building? And all I can say is because we never really did a formal study of that. We didn't think we'd be at this at this for this long. Which you know what? I, I want to, uh, if I may, cut this short a little bit because of time. And I think that one of the things we have to address, because someone else, I, I, it was Keith actually who said that this has been going on for years. No, it hasn't, guys. Last year was our first full year. Before that, we still had the the old boards. So last year was our full first full year. And the first thing we did was get an engineer's report so that we could make a decision based on knowledge, not just, well, the roof is leaking and this doesn't look good. We did something. We formed a building committee, even with Joanne and Rob on it, they couldn't come to an, to an answer. So, and, and we got caught off in our second year. So this has not been going on for so long. And I just think, especially in times being what they are, I'm not ready to say that we should get rid of that high school so quickly. Who knows? Who knows what social distancing is going to mean? Or who knows who could possibly want that building? I, and I'm not saying that we, I'm just saying that we need to take all things into consideration. We are not near making a decision. We're just not, especially not in these times. But to say that we've been at it for so long and no, we haven't. It's a year, a year and a half. That's it. So year, this will be our, our third school year of operating two buildings. Um, no, no, it won't. It won't. No, the, because the first year, year before last, we still had the old board. They didn't get out. The only reason that Jenny was on was because Betsy was kind enough to say she wasn't going to be on it. And we couldn't make formal decisions until July of that year. Right. Yeah. So that's one. So July of that year to July of last year was our first year. Sure. It may seem like 10 years, but it was really just our first year. And now we got cut off in our second. So no, and we haven't been. It's a year and a half that we've been operating these three buildings. We could not make a decision before that, as Jenny said. Okay. And I'm not, I'm not trying to um, drive a decision in, in a direction or not in a direction. Um, what I'm trying to, to make sure that we have a good discussion of is we're going to be writing a book. I mean, I'm going to be finishing a short draft that I made for part of it says, insert comments about the building here. Um, I will I will insert comments based on this feedback that I'm getting from you guys now. And certainly it'll be something that we all can look at and, and approve. I don't want to be seen as A, forcing an agenda or B, hijacking um, a, a process. I just feel like we have, you know, we need to be very clear about what we're saying in the booklet that we're trying to put together in the next 48 hours, what we're saying about where we are with our buildings and what's going on, you know, what's going on with that and where we are in the decision process. And, you know, it's, you know, I, I don't want to say that we have an administration that's looking at how to consolidate operations in one building um, if we're not interested in having our administration spend that spend their time looking at that, Carl, yeah. I got to be honest, Carl, that that just can't even be on our radar right now. Right, the three different models alone that we're going to have to look at as a way to operate school for next sure. year okay. is the focus of what's best for kids. And I agree. And, sorry, right. and I just I do agree. There's got to be something in there, but I got to be honest with you that that will go to the very bottom of my list because I got to find a way and, 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 for and all kiddos is, to get back into school. And that is fine. And I will certainly, you know, but you know, I want to have this conversation so I can make reference to, you know, what's going on and 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 write something that's accurate 
and isn't a committing you guys to, to doing something you don't want to do or, or don't have the, the bandwidth to do, but B isn't, you know, just marketing BS. You know what I mean? Well, but that's what they would consider it, Carl. If you say the administration is looking into what it could be and what they're going to say, you've been looking into it for all these years and we still have three buildings. It's going to piss them off more than it's going to help. Right. And I, I don't want the administration to be looking into that right now. As Janie just said, we've got bigger fish to fry with with COVID and what next year is going to look like. And um, we, our buildings could be an asset to us in going forward. I do, again, for another, another conversation for another meeting, though, is where, what we, where we want to go going forward. I think we should present what Janie said. It practical time frame because people are getting confused with how long it has been yes what is the real time frame that and what have we done in that time frame show them the because we have we have been proactive yes it is not the answers any of us wanted we wanted a magic bullet we didn't get it we are but we are marching forward and this is what we've done and it was our first priority the yeah. first priority we put when we could finally make a decision and we were an independent board, we hired the engineering company. We don't have to apologize for this is what I'm saying, guys. We have really done in a really short timeline. Did anyone ever have an engineer's report before so that they could really base their decision on data? No. <laughs> we couldn't even, we couldn't even historically say where the utility bills went between building A and building B in Rochester. So yeah, we certainly we 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 certainly don't have that information. The important thing that I wanted to do was, you know, have this conversation. And it's important, I think, to be clear and direct about what we're talking about and what we're saying so that it's, you know. It's, of course, we have to be clear it's, and direct. It's, it's, direct. It's, not just, it's not just, you know, it's not just Carl writing a letter that people agree on. It's it's Carl writing a letter that sums up what people say. And especially with the time frame being short, I write the letter that says, blah, 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 the administration is going to be looking into. And then everyone says, no, we don't want the administration looking into that. Right. So, no you know, it's, it's a big question of just, you know, say we need to say something about the buildings and whatever it is we need to be saying it with the united voice and so i think i've heard from everybody and i i mean i can picture ethan's response in my head i haven't heard it directly from him but i know i'm pretty sure where he's parked so ethan um go ahead and chime in and you'll also see what i'm writing because you're the person i'm sending it to and you can tell me yeah. no oh, well, that doesn't work i i think we should state where we are not where we hope to be or not where we where we are is we have not chosen building yet and mm -hmm. we have and we face an enormous crisis of how we're even getting back to school next year so um that's where we are uh, all the rest is hypothetical and wish and hope sure you okay. can one of the things i will add um lindy and i are both um hoping against hope that this isn't the final guidance for opening schools. But if we have to limit classrooms to groups of 10, uh, we simply don't have enough classrooms to do that in, in the Rochester Elementary School and the Stockbridge Elementary School. So um, again, that has not been confirmed. We're not certain that it's going to limit to 10. We're certainly hoping they nudge that number up a bit. But if they don't nudge it up a bit, we're going to have some challenges in terms of um, how we go back to school. And and there's other ways other than more asking. I mean, if, if, we were, if, if we had to put everyone in groups of 10, we would need to be hiring another half dozen teachers to supervise Correct. the classrooms that are all under 10 people. Correct. Let alone heating the entire Rochester building and busing Stockbridge kids up there or whatever. That's right. But just let me finish. Okay. Carl. I just, I just want to finish this. There are other options. I just want to be clear about that. There are staggered days when youngsters could go to school. There are rolling schedules. There are a number of things, but I just wanted to be, I just wanted to make the point that having some space at this point is not necessarily a, a, a horrible thing. Okay, um, I think I have an idea of what I'm going to say, and I will circulate uh, 
the or, well, you you you've all been shared with a document. I'll write the what I think I heard of this building conversation uh, and append it to that. And y'all can uh, tell me if I've got it right. Let's see. Sounds good. Policies. Um, hang on. I'm, I'm that should be easy. Close. So, yeah, I'm um, today. <laughs> comment is that it, it is it is public comment. Oh, public comment. Great. Is there any uh, is is there any public who is uh, who is left that has something they would like to say? I'd like to remind you that public comment is limited to registered voters in Stockbridge and Rochester, and uh, is, is uh, uh, a five minute uh, 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 a five minute uh, speaking window. Carl, this is uh, Tim again. Uh, okay, Tim, we'll go with you first, and then whoever the other person second. Um. I just want to go back to the proposal that was given to the Board of Education. That proposal is not being followed today. And I understand Janie's point about, you know, merge uh, every everybody's equal and everything. But that is not the proposal that was given to the Board of Ed. Now, if you go to the Board of Ed and you listen to that whole RETN, uh, media video after the public call, after they had shut that down you can hear the board of education talking to themselves about how screwed up that mess is so um, they were not happy about two buildings so we just need to make sure that if one building can be used, that should be what is being done because we sat through all that uh, merge information with Steve Dale, who was filling us full of crap for months and only had one thing on his agenda, and that was to merge schools. That wasn't a good deal for everybody. So going forward, I think Rochester and Stockbridge can offer some really good opportunities to students, and that is what was in the proposal. That is not what's being used today, and part of that's because of transportation. If we could use the $80,000 keeping that high school building operating to transport opportunity from Stockbridge to Rochester in a daily or bi-daily basis, that would make so much more sense than trying to keep a white elephant open. And that, you know, that's my opinion. And that's where I thought was going to be the good opportunity. So, you know, it's my own personal opinion, but thank you, you go back and look at, you go back and look at the proposal that was given to the board of education and you listen to the 45 seconds after they thought that the video was done and they're talking amongst themselves and you'll see what they really feel. I, I, I will certainly take a look at that, sir. Thank you for your comment. Okay. Anyone else? Yeah, hey, this is Rob Gardner. Hi, Rob. Uh, you've been taking my name in vain tonight. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know that I personally have, but certainly, <laughs> certainly you've been brought up. So I just wanted to say this, and, and supporting uh, Janie in a way, the building situation is extraordinarily complicated. Even if Joanne and I weren't at each other's throats, it's very, very hard. It's, I won't go into all the levels that it is. It's a very complicated, hard problem. It's a functional problem, a money problem, a political problem. And th there's no shame in saying that. I, I'm, I'm sorry we weren't able to resolve it, but that's just the truth of it. There's just no magic bullet. There's no simple way out of this. And that's just the truth. And that's the end of my presentation for tonight. <laughs> Thank you, Rob. Um, that I, 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 I'll spoil you a little bit on where I'm writing, which is basically what I've gotten from uh, Janie and Ethan and uh, Bonnie and Lindy and everyone else, which is that it's an incredibly complicated problem. There's not an easy answer. And we... We need to 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 continue to be patient. So, um, 
you know, I, I, I thank you for your work on uh, the, 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 the thing that was the building committee and that I hope that as we, we go forward in community engagement, we keep hearing your voice. Thanks. Carl, it's Keith. Hi, Keith. How are you doing today? Okay, how are you? I'm doing well. Uh, first, I'm very disappointed that somebody on the school board would use the word conspiracy. I find that a very divisive term, and I find it insulting. Okay. Um, next, I, I just like clarification from you. Uh, so, Stockbridge um, uh, board, town people, or whatever—I'm not sure what the correct term is. So, forgive me. Uh, has voted that they would like to see a, um, a separate vote. Correct. Stockbridge hasn't voted. Anything? Uh, no, the Stockbridge. The, the, what? Okay, the, the Stockbridge Civil Board of Authority, which is the Select Board, Justice right. of the Peace, and the Town Clerk, commented in their minutes about the meeting. Um, so they had to officially move the vote from the school where votes normally happen to the town to the town offices because they want to be consistent about right. where we'll be voting. So in their minutes to that, they said that they would prefer to count the vote separately. Okay. Now, um, if Rochester comes back to you and says they want to commingle the votes, what does the school board then decide? I don't know. We haven't uh, we 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 haven't uh, been faced with that yet. We decided to postpone making the decision on commingling versus separate no, no, counting. I, 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 I heard what you said, but okay. it'd be interesting to see you've got two different towns you got two towns that would come up with a difference of opinion but There's it's not the the other. let it's me finish the question I'm sorry. Jamie, please let him finish. Yeah, I'm sorry go ahead Keith I'm sorry that's okay so if if the Rochester um, civil board comes back with no we want to commingle does one town carry more weight than the other uh, no sir no they do not um, you know uh, the Stockbridge board, the the the, the Stockbridge uh, board's advice is they would rather not. Um, we'll see what the Rochester's to, Rochester's board advice is, and then you know uh, make a decision going forward. Um, I think the, the 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 most important point to me personally was the comment about about you know the board is saying they don't want to do it for a public health reason. Um, and the reasons that we were giving as as a school board were were political. Do, are, are we unified and we count everything together? Are we transparent and we 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 let uh, the voters have all the all the granularity we can give them? Um, are both political decisions? The 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 issue brought up by the Stockbridge Civil Board of Authority is a public health one, and I think we'll see what the Rochester Board of Authority Civil Board of Authority says, and then look at it that way. But I think. You know, it's not a simple question of one town has more more weight than another. I think it's a question of, you know, what's a decision that sends a message versus what's a decision that keeps people safe. I think is a different is is, is the way at least that I want to want to see how that question sugars out before before we 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 reach a decision as a board. Right, and that's how you're couching that question. But I think it's obvious that um, at least the people in Stockbridge. Um, and you can count me as part of the conspira uh, conspiracy. Uh, would like to know how how each town looks at this merger or unified district. Um, so it'd be interesting to say. And as far as the building is concerned, maybe the board could lay out a timeline, since um, you know it hasn't been years. Although I, you know, the way I read the the consolidation was that that building would be closed. Uh, but that's okay. I could misinterpret that. But maybe the board could lay out a timeline taking out the pandemic uh, excuse right now and say, you know what, by 2022, 20, uh, you know, whatever, we'll have made it, we'll, we'll have a decision in place as to what we're doing with that building, whether we're going to close it, whether we're going to need it. It gives the board sufficient time to analyze the pandemic and any other situation that may arise. And do what's best for the community. At least give the so a date, a date certain on a decision, saying that this will be figured out before the next budget cycle, or this will be figured out by uh, the end of 2020, or this will be figured out uh, 
by the end of the the the, the current period. I mean, not to, not looking to put pressure. Don't, don't not even say 2020, 2021. But give the community some insight as to okay. where, where the end is. That's that's that, that that's a point that's that, that that's very well taken. Um, it is uh, it, it 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 is fairly late, and my brain is kind of pudding, so I'm not sure I want to have uh, that debate right now. But I think very much if board members if board members would like to send me uh, comments around when they think we might want to have a date certain, we can consider putting that into the into the article because I think he you know I think there's there is value into in, into trying to define a, to, to define a timeline, and I don't want to put everyone on the spot to try to figure it out now. But if we can uh, get some comments together so that when we send out a report, it has some information that might answer that question, that might be helpful. Okay, thank you. You're welcome, Keith. Anyone else have public comment? Uh, hearing none. Our next regular meeting is, and my screen has, of course, gone blank again because I'm saving Don't it. Don't we have policies? Excuse me? Don't we have policies we have to go through? Oh, yes, we do. Um, yes. We it is 9.06. Let's look at the policy list. Oh. <laughs> In my sweet, happy place, I was putting off the policies because... But again... They've been warned and paid for in the papers. Yeah, no, no, no. That is, that is absolutely true. Bruce, which policies are the two we're withdrawing? Bruce, your turn. You probably left. <laughs> no, I'm Bruce is here, but I just I want to make sure that we go through them in a kind of an orderly fashion. Okay, okay. Bruce, you have the floor. All right. So the first one is staffing and job descriptions. That's code. Um, uh, Ray, you don't have to put them all up, I don't think. But, B30. Uh, yeah, B30. There's no changes to that. Uh, it's like not in that email, has, Ray. Pardon? It's not in that email, Ray. B30 is going to be on the drive. Yeah, and that would be because there were no changes to it. it if, it's not on there. So If you go to our warning, email. there's a link to them on our warning. Yeah. So B30 is fine. B32 is fine, which is the next one personnel files and b33 is also fine which is resignations so yep. maybe you could do those three as a block to begin with and then i'll we'll go from there make a motion to accept b30 b32 and b33 policy second second okay the next oh go ahead you need to vote. Any discussion Okay, I would, uh, hearing none, I'm going to take a, a roll call vote to approve policies B30, staffing and job descriptions, policy B32, personnel files, and policy B33, resignations. Um, Amy Wilt, how, what say you? Yes. Uh, Ethan Bowen, what say you? Yes. Jenny Feinberg, what say you? Yes. Jenny Austin, what say you? Yes, but can you repeat the names of those again? Uh, B30, staffing and job descriptions. B32, personnel files. B33, resignations. Thanks. Okay. Uh, uh, those policies are approved unanimously. Okay, the next three. Um, Gina is recommending that we pull back social media and don't do that yet. Okay. Um, yeah, uh, that we would have, it would be done at a different date. It needs more editing. It okay. does seem uh, like an important one in our um, our new normal here. So um, I, I would hope that we could expedite that. Well, this this is going to be Jamie's task, not mine. Okay. Well, uh, the next on. one will be admis admission, uh, C325 admission of non-resident students. She wants me to also recommend we pull that one back. Uh, the next one is C29, tuitioning of students from districts, um, and that's she doesn't think that that's necessary. And by the way, guys, she's had this for a month. I finally got it today with the changes and updates, and I'm not throwing her under the bus. I'm just pretty frustrated that it had to have happen today after we've you know, gone through and, and done all this. So... So those yeah, as, three, as, a choice district, as a choice district, that, does, that, that doesn't even apply to us. 
Well, I know that. I know that. But those are those were in the in the book. So those three are pulled back. The next one is um, C32, which is students 18 year old or older. There are some minor changes. Ray, could you put that one up to see the minor changes, please? C32. I read through that one. Looked good. Well, there's a little bit of red she had in there, so I just wanted you to see it. Uh, that's just it's just grammatical, and it doesn't really in some capitals doesn't really change the meaning at all. So if you're good with that one. Yeah. Um, also, yep. um, the next one I'd like you to put up is um, therapy dogs. This got some major edits and I don't know what you want to do with that. I, I'm a little concerned that we put it in the paper as being um, a certain way and then uh, Dean is recommending we change it some more, and maybe you want to pull that one back too for now. Absolutely, as you can see the edits that she put on there. I like her, I like her edits. I mean, it, you're saying that because each one of these is actually written in the paper. Is that what you're t saying? Well, I don't. I think as long as it doesn't change the meaning of what it is, if it's a you know, if it's a grammatical <laughs> thing or a capitalization, that doesn't change much here. Um, Basically, what she, if you're willing to accept these these edits as Dina put them in, then I think we can go. But because this we we bounced this thing around all winter, quite frankly, we um, have. <laughs> Does it apply to our district? <laughs> yes. Pardon, Pardon? It's relevant to our district currently. <laughs> it's yeah. Uh, one of the incidents happened in Rochester. Yes. Right, but I mean, there's not, no one. I mean, but it's not, not currently. We're going to need to deal with. It's nothing that we're going to need to deal with because we're not in school in Rochester until probably the fall or maybe in the summer. If you're going to pull it back, I don't mind at all. Let's pull it back. Yeah, and just to be clear, this is not a situation at Rochester currently. Okay, so problem with it. <laughs> so the next one is field trips, which is D thirty. <laughs> there are just some minor edits with that. Okay. Yep, I read through that one. And if you're comfortable with that, I don't know, Ray, is it there somewhere? No, it's in. I don't see that. No okay. Well, that there wasn't much there at all. Uh, so, if you're com comfortable with what it looked like um, when it was sent around, um, there's nothing that's going to change there very much. Um, so, field trips and 18-year-old students were still going to be taking forward. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the next one: selection of instructional materials. No changes. I don't think there are any changes on that one. D32. No. D32. <laughs> you want to bundle those? Yeah, we can bundle those three. I make a motion to accept policy C32, D30, and D32. Do I hear a second? I second. A motion has been made and seconded to approve the policy C32, 18 year old students. Uh, uh, D30 field trips and D32 selection of instructional materials. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, Amy Wilt, what say you? Yes. Ethan Bowen, what say you? Yes. JD Feinberg, what say you? Yes. Jenny Austin, what say you? Yes. I also say aye. The the three uh, the three policies C thirty two eighteen year old students D thirty field trips and D thirty two selection instructional materials are unanimously approved. All right, the last four uh, that would be E thirty two visits by parents, community members, and or the media. Um, I don't think there are any edits to that one. Ray, is it is it one of the ones she sent back? It, they're minor if there are. It is one of the ones she sent back, yes. Yeah, there's just some, well, there's a there's a FERPA part at the bottom that she put in. 
She so doesn't let, like. Let's, let's hold that one back, please. Actually, it, she took a lot of it out and uh, substituted. If you can see the strike through in the last four lines, but there really isn't a whole lot of big deal things. So I don't know what your pleasure is as a board. I thought it sounded fine. Um, okay, I just see a lot. I, I, I get leery when there's lots of red. Okay. Well, there's a lot of red strike throughs, not not add tos. All right. So, so okay. So uh, then let's just move to the next one. Okay, the next one's capitalization of assets. And the only problem she had with that one was uh, the number. Um, I don't know whether Tara is still here. Are you, Tara? Is that F32 that she said she wanted to discuss? I'm with? here. Uh, Tara, the capitalization of assets, Dina was disputing the $5,000, where that came from and why that was the number. You know? It's what our auditors use, and it's okay. what's in, I believe that's right out of the grant language, because that is a grant, that is a policy that was required as a result of our fiscal monitoring. Okay. Well, there that answers. I'd have the to go back and double check. No, I think you told me that when we first put this thing together. Um, That's so my recollection I, at this time of night. Yeah, there aren't <laughs> any other changes to this, so I'd ask you to bundle that one. Uh, I did not read that one because it said that she was going to discuss it with Tara. So. Yep. Yep. And then um, F twenty four prevention of conflict of interest in procurement, and that the only question about that was the zero. And I think probably that's what we put as the number of uh, gifts, total gifts uh, that somebody could give would be zero. Uh, you don't want people coming in and, and making a bribe, basically. If you can see down in the third paragraph, that's where it talks about it. So we, we made that value zero, not five bucks or whatever. You so come what, in. what does that mean? It means one of our employees cannot... Add ask their buddy to come do something and give them five bucks for it is that what yeah, you're saying you cannot solicit or accept a favor or gratuity or anything of monetary value from oh, such vendors favors that our employees are giving to others or or favors that people community members are giving to our school um favors that are being given to actually us so for example a person technically, technically if if i as a personal cv um cv oil customer got a christmas calendar from them or a new year's calendar from them as a gift my role as a school board member would prevent me from accepting that because it's it's got it's got some some value so there's some there's some conflict around um the idea of having a zero value thing because Many of us get, you know, stupid tchotchkes like return address, you know, stickers or whatever from people that may or may not be, you know, suppliers. If you get a fridge magnet from CV Oil and CV Oil also sells to the school, that would violate this policy. And you how about uh, Red Sox tickets? <laughs> well, see, that's that, the, the, the problem I have with this policy is exactly that zero value. There needs to be some kind of nominal value to prevent it from to to prevent it from being something that we could witch hunt an employee on. Ray, vendor sent me this the other day. It's a flashlight. I think it fits in line with what you're talking about. They sent it to everybody. I didn't ask for it. Right, right. So we need to we need to hold this policy back and check with Dina on that because what I could see would be vendor that didn't get the bid. You know, saying, aha, you know, I, but you sent Ray a flashlight. You know, you bribed Ray to get that, to get that with that nifty, nifty, fl crappy flashlight. So let's hold this one back, please. Carl, uh, I did check with Dina on this one. And when I told her I was going to put zero in there, she was fine with it. So we did talk about it. Okay. I, I still like to hold it back till I, till I ask her that specific question. Okay. And the final one is bids, quotations, procurement uh, policy, uh, F27. And I don't think there were any edits to that one. What about F31 emergency closings? 
that was um, that was something to get in line with the language that Stockbridge or um, Sharon had suggested. Uh, they had made a couple little edits to that one, and it's uh, to to kind of and everybody so far has just accepted their language. Okay, you just didn't mention you said that you said the final one was whatever the one was above this. Yeah, one. I don't. I'm not looking at. <clears throat> I guess maybe that's one that you hadn't. Yeah. Okay, I see it now. Emergency closing. That's uh, there's no. Uh, okay. There's no changes to that one. It's it's clean. So the number the one that we're 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 dropping uh, F twenty four, but the other ones we can approve as a batch, correct? Which are yeah. can we go read? Uh, uh, I would entertain a motion to approve E thirty two visits by parent visit by parents, F twenty three capitalization of assets, um, F twenty seven bids quotations and procurements, and F thirty one emergency closings. I'm concerned about F23 because uh, Dina's note said that she was needed to discuss with Tara, and it didn't seem that she had put that one back to us. To okay, vote. then let's 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 uh, let, let's amend that. I entertain a motion to to uh, accept policy E32 visit by parents, E27 uh, uh, bids quotation procurement, and F31 emergency close, uh, closings. Could you hold for a second? As you, as I told you earlier, when we talked about this, we just, I, that's why I asked T, uh, Tara the question. Dina wanted to know the origin of $5,000, and Tara just said that. So uh, there is no conflict of, of, of anything having to do with that one. The capital right. of assets? It's supposed to be $5,000 because that's what the auditors say. Okay, so that policy is, is one that Dina sent back today, F23. She yeah. wanted me to have a conversation with, yeah, yeah, wanted me to have a conversation with Tara about the origin of the five thousand okay. dollars, which uh, is what we just did. So, so okay, I would entertain a motion to approve E thirty two visit by parents F twenty three capitalization of assets F twenty seven bids quotation procurement and F thirty one emergency closing. Closing. I kind of Dean answered the five thousand dollar question about capitalization of assets. I so move. Do I hear a second? Second. Discussion. Amy, you're you're pensively you're you're I'm reading, reading something. I'm reading it. I'm, I'm just reading because I didn't read this one because I, I thought it was off. So I'm just quickly reading through it. Um uh yes, sure. Okay, I could I could sing the Jeopardy song if that was <laughs> okay. on the spot. <laughs> okay, a motion has been made and seconded to uh, approve uh, the following policies: E thirty two visit by parents, uh, F twenty three capitalization of assets, F twenty seven bids quotations and procurement, and F thirty one emergency closings. I'm going to go to my voter list, and Amy Wilt, what say you? Yes. Uh, Ethan Bowen, what say you? Yes. Gene Feinberg, what say you? Yes. Anyone else, what say you? Yes. I also say yes. It is unanimously carried. The four mo the four policies are approved. Thanks, folks. Our next uh, uh, regular meeting is Tuesday, July 7th via Google Hangout. We will probably be having a special meeting uh, once we get the answers from the Rochester School Board of Authority to approve the voting method, but the next regular meeting will be Tuesday, July 2nd. Having said that, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. So oh, do we have to? <laughs> no, Janie, let's hang out. <laughs> <You're> line dance. <laughs> All right, uh, a motion has been made and did someone second it? I did. Second it. A motion has been made and seconded to adjourn. I will see you all at our special meeting before our July 7th regular meeting. Good night, everybody. Have a great night. Thank you all. Bye. Good night.